Oh, excuse me, is that on TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, how's that work? <laughs> it just broke the ice. I think it's called free speech. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tonight's meeting is uh, being recorded live. <laughs> um, With no delay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, no and it's uh, for Verizon 33 and Comcast 22, and it's uh, you can find it on www.rctv.org. And okay. Um, First item on the agenda is a continuation of Meadowbrook Golf Club uh, RDA 2017-10. But uh, Chuck, do we have something we can sign under old new business uh, certificate of compliance for 270-0631-164 Green Street, Map 17, Lot 216, Brenner, Dave? I think didn't you and I Chuck we go up? Yeah, two weeks yeah. ago. And then we're going to send in a, uh, a map uh, plan with... Uh, we're just waiting for an as plan, right? Yeah. Can you just um, agree to uh, continue to uh, RDA 2017-10 to August 8th? Did you do that? I thought it was hard. You've got... You had 13th, but isn't it? It's the 8th, isn't it? It is the 8th. It is the 8th, yeah. What's the 8th? It's a Wednesday? No, no. Month? Oh, the 8th is the second month. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah the 8th. Can't be the 8th. It is. The first month's the 8th. It is. It seems just to a. 8 8 18. Well, play the numbers. That's okay. We opened, and uh, our first item has been continued to the eighth. The Meadowbrook. Yep. And we're on to uh, old new business uh, certificate of compliance for 164 Green Street. Chuck, you want to say something about that? Uh, yeah, we went to the site and reviewed the order, um, the order conditions, and uh, as built plans and noticed uh, in the first go round that there was some emissions on the Asbill plan, the fence, the concrete pad that will house the shed, and a portion of the walkway was missing. We asked those to be put on the Asbill plan. I received that yesterday with those changes, and uh, it was our only request uh, that the applicant needed to do before we signed the certificate of compliance. No other outstanding issues. There are none. I think we closed all the outstanding issues and stated that at the first meeting, but needed revisions to the aspect plan. Which have come in. I'm making a motion to issue the certificate of compliance. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? I need your pin. Okay. Being uh, seven oh eight, we are now um, on to the next. Three items, um, 705, 706, and 707. Um, notice of intent for 270-0703. Notice of intent 270-072. Notice of intent, oh, it doesn't have a, a DEP number. These are 1260 to 1264 Main Street, lots 3, 4, and 5. Map 45, lots 104 and 106, Mass Equity Investors. And I believe um, applicant and uh, consultants here. So I can put this on the board if you want, but um, we're really reviewing 
the order of conditions which was sent out to the applicant this afternoon. Right. Um, I, re I quickly reviewed the two of them for lots three and four. I don't know if anybody else had the opportunity to look at those. I read through them. Them. Yeah, I didn't have any issue. But, um, there was something, and I looked through just to make sure that we didn't include it anywhere else, but there was something about providing reports, and it included a report from or to the environmental monitor. And yeah. From the environmental monitor? No, I, I think it was two. Two, okay. Um, but we don't, we don't have... A, a monitor. We, we haven't required anything like that on this job. I think it listed you as well, or, or Chuck. I just want to make sure that's not something we're talking about. So I, I can correct that, but I meant uh, John Tilton um, in the audience here is their environmental monitor, in my opinion, when he's out there okay. reviewing that stuff for us. And I just I just called him out as that. So, um, But I did mean John. If I, I can change that. No, no, I mean, it wasn't anything. I just wanted that, as long as that's understood, I think that's clear. That's the here. environmental model with EOEA? Uh, Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't. We weren't All talking right. about, like, remember we had that one, the, the one that's currently going on where it's, we talked about in, in, you know, independent environmental monitor and what that is. And, but I, I, I don't think you need to change anything, Chuck. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any other no. language. Yeah, I looked through to find it, and I couldn't find it, but I, I think. It, it, it probably does say an environmental monitor when, um, I think it mentions it when there's an issue that mm -hmm. the, I have to go and the environmental monitor and the engineer and the applicant need to all talk about what's happened. I think it's called out there in the reports. I'm not sure it says it in the reports, but we do, we're asking for a report once a month. Okay. Um, just on work in the buffer zone. Right. And I didn't have any other uh, or any other comments. I should say. So, so uh, I did send out a note today saying that um, one of these orders did not receive a file number yet. It's um, for lot five, and it's the one that's uh, the. the the one that's going to be a two-family house. It's right in the street. So I didn't fully prepare that. I do have a, a rough draft. I sent the draft to the applicant, but still we're not sure of the file number or any, any comments. EP comments. They can't really close that one yet. But, but the other two, if there are any comments, are comments from the applicant. Um, you know, we could, could uh, close that, in my opinion. Okay. Do I hear a motion? We need to uh, do them separately, though. No, I, I'm okay. going to. Okay. Do I hear a motion to? Um, so do we have? I uh, make a motion to close 1260, 1264 Main Street, Lot Three. Yeah. Do I hear second. a second? All those in favor? And then I make a motion to issue the order of conditions for 1260, 1264 Main Street, Lot Three. Lot Four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? I'll just keep on going. making a motion to issue okay. 1260, 1264 Main Street, Lot 4. Close. Second. All those in favor? And I make a motion to... John, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah. on Lot 5, where was we at? Is this a fee discrepancy? For two family, they want a uh, DP is requesting another five hundred fifty dollars, but we're in, in a position where we don't know if we may be single family or the two family. You're working with ZBA, so we wouldn't mind no. like keeping it open if we could, because we may come back and call it a single family. We're we going to leave five open. We're, gonna leave. we're, we're not going to do anything with five. Yeah. Okay. So, so but I like the cl uh, thanks for the yeah, clarification. Okay. Um, so what we're doing, we're, we just closed three and approved three. We just closed four and. Okay. We'll make a motion to issue four, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll leave everything with five done. Thank you. So um, I make a motion to issue the order of conditions for Second. four. All those in favor? Okay. And can you make a motion to continue lot five until time certain? Somebody else take over here. Yeah, come on. <laughs> make a motion okay. to, I, make a, nope. what about this? Make well, a motion to days. continue 1260, 1264 Main Street, lot five until such time as that's determined to be either a single family or two family home. Second. All those in favor? Uh, very good. <laughs> All right. But you really don't have any timeline for that, right? No, because I haven't submitted yet. So probably September. 
So is, that's not going to change anything about the any of the, the basins or anything around that home, right? In the I don't know what it's going to change. You wouldn't be changing the footprint of the house, right? If anything small, maybe. Yeah, because right now it's. 5,000 square feet, so it would probably end up being 20, 50 plus 1,000 based on the bylaws for a single family within a lot. So it, it doesn't have a final number. We haven't right. any comments from DEP yet. It's continued, we'll, we can deal with it in the, you know, as you guys make the progress. Dave made a motion. Did it was it second? I think it was second and voted. Dave, the other Dave was oh, okay. second. David Dave. Okay. Our next race continued anyways. Alrighty. I'm gonna just send them both both along. This first one's lot five. Uh, lot five is the one we're continuing. Yeah. yeah, what what lot is that one? I meant three. Lot three. <laughs> Just you know, paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Is it here at the end? Yes. This one's live. Five. Four. Four. Oh, yeah. Four. serious <laughs> Shark is never not serious. <laughs> you will learn that. <laughs> So I'll prepare that too. Um, okay. So we'll do a uh, affidavit for you know a, a, a true copy, and you can take that down to the report. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you. So two, three times. So, you know, ten, ten thirty would be great. Oh, that's, I, I just need that. It'll be ready any time after 10, 10, 30. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Um, when do you send the agenda out? You know, to, to you, time wise. Like, no, time wise. You know, when you I send usually it, have it posted on Thursday. Were any of these? Um, there are a lot of continuations. Were any of these? Did we know about them before? We knew about them yesterday. And, and that's really just how it happens. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Because the uh, engineers can bring in what we need or an applicant can bring in what we need up until the last minute. And then when they kind of realize that there's too much headwind, they, they just say, well, like, we can't get it together. And at 1503 Main Street, Castellano, yeah. it was that the engineer in town, um, with his review, needed to be answered. All those questions needed to be answered and there just wasn't enough time. But they didn't know that until they saw what they needed or what the engineer was requiring. Mm. So that was what the problem was. And I, I told you, well, and also the land trust 
hasn't contacted me about that portion of it also. Right. So I don't really know where that's going. And again, since it's kind of off our plate, I'm not sure the applicant wants to wait for you know that to happen. Um. You guys, you guys sticking around for the rest of our meeting? This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to. <laughs> That's exactly what I was the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Chuck, I know this is a, uh, it, uh, 750, 750, oh, it's actually past 750. We're, all, uh, yeah. we're up to 730, Perfectos. but no, yeah, for Perfectos. Do you have the... Do you have the um, the plan, the plan view plan of Perfectos um, on your laptop? So I can, so I can get one. Yeah. If you I need, can, it, if you need a PDF of the, the last plan, three. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Do I have it with us um, here? I yeah, the, that the you can put up in the, the, the rest yeah. of them, these three. I had I another idea with this oh, too. I get it. I, I saw the I did. someone probably got the other day and it was yeah. something that people <laughs> so brought up I get it so relative to they the, might not just be here the, for seven thirty. The barrier or anybody who's interested. I, I wanted to see where the thirty five foot line was yeah, you have to, relative you to have the dumpster to pad. The only thing I would say is I'm just because if the applicant has requested to continue it's just I don't know how much we I just wanted to see it. I I yeah. I I looked for my back at night. I couldn't find it. Couldn't find the paper plan. So, I can, can I ask a point of information? We didn't get an email this time about doing the site visits. Do I, can I simply assume that there may be, and I should show up for site visits Monday morning? Um, uh, it says it on the agenda. Yeah, the second page. The, well, the did you get it? I just didn't see it that time, apparently. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did miss you. I was, I was yeah, like, oh, where's Dave? Unless, so unless, you said, unless, you know, one of us can't make it and we could make it on Tuesday if we've got an appointment sometimes, we do change it to Tuesday, mm -hmm. and that's when Chuck sends that out. We'll but it typically, out. it's been Monday morning at 9.30. Okay, so that's uh, just practical information. And you're also, you're also welcome to go on your own, and I would suggest when you go on your own, that you knock on the door. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. And I doubt that I would do that. And then, Carl, you did go Does to it else? Yeah. Yes. I see. I thought maybe they could, if they, they went. Yeah. as I'm looking at that, I remembered the, the, the lines, and I thought the where you could see the 25-foot line was where the 35-foot line was. The 35-foot line cuts through the dumpster pad. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. matter. So it's not, because... You know, there were, there were people parked to the left of that the, this oh, week. Always, there's some, somebody uh, and there. Two to four to the right, but um, I actually did stop in there, and I did sample their wares, and they are very good. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had an everything bagel, and it was, it was, I found it more enjoyable than another local vendor. Okay. Let's just put it that way. Gotcha. Can I get a motion to continue? Uh, 285 Main Street to August 8th. Make a motion to uh, continue 15, uh, 285, 285 uh, Main Street, uh, Map 12, Lot 43, uh, Taj Engineering. Second. All those in favor? Do I hear uh, a motion to continue? Notice of no, we can't do that. Yeah. No, we can't do that yet. Okay, um, Chuck, is there? Can we discuss 113 Arcadia, aka Zero yeah, Meta? We can discuss that. Um, let me see what I have on here. Did I the first one on old new business? Old new business? No. Okay. No. I'm saving that one? Yeah. 
I checked in now if they were going to come in or not. So. Oh, that's fine. Do you have any communication this week from uh, with Steve? So, did I... This is from the administrative one in Arcadia. So anyways, I'm going to have to, you're gonna have to use the board for the letter. Yeah, I this, yeah, this is in my packet. No, but that's okay. came in that's on the 18th. Oh. Um, so he's just saying that, that this office has been retained by the applicant to create the certificate, uh, the conservation restriction on 113 Arcadia Ave. But he's bringing to my attention that it takes a while to um, you know, get all the documents together and go through the process, and there's many steps involved. Uh, the commission asked me at the last meeting uh, after I said that they wanted to start and they showed up at town hall and I reminded them about this car where we would want this in place prior to issuing the building permit. So I was asked to talk to them and find out you know, if there was a happy medium that we could kind of arrive at. And, and this is what I received, which is, which is just a letter from an attorney saying that um, it's going to take a long time, but, but they have been retained for that purpose. Um, this is your copy, is that right? But um, I'm gonna, I can show you what we asked for or what it takes to uh, put something like this together. And that's... So his comment... These are the steps that's needed. His comment in the letter is that the whole process takes several months. Mm -hmm. But our question was, we would love to see... We understand that the, re the review of this is not in their hands. You know, once it gets to the state or whatever, whoever's reviewing this, that, it, that it's in their hands to review this. But we would like to see that everything's been drafted and put together and at least submitted. Um, that, that was kind of what we said, well, isn't that the happy medium? Uh, he, he didn't really talk about that step of it. He was really referring to the whole process as far as those that several month process. Uh, yes. In that letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and under A, I mean, some of that is, has already been done. I mean, Steve, Steve Erickson put together that wildlife habitat evaluation. We have all the information on, on what we, and what they filed and what we approved. I would think that would, would that, where, what's the municipal certification? Do, do you recall, Chuck? We just need to sign off on, on this that we're allowing this to happen as a town. So the Bob would have, Bob Ashore would have to sign off you know, it seems like they have a plan of land. They have a field report. USGS topograph showing that would have been part of the notice of intent. Um, municipal certification, I'm, I'm sure we could put that together fairly quickly. The only thing that looks like that they don't have is an application form. I don't know too much about that, but I don't see this as a huge effort on mm. their part. I think it's there. And I, I sent them an application from Harold Ave and it's boiler, it, I don't want to say it's boilerplate, there's a template online mm -hmm. and every application I've ever seen looks like the template modified for the, you know, yeah, for, the, for that address. Yeah. So I sent them that, you know, they had tried a couple of things but, but it, it didn't look right and when it, when it doesn't look right, my instinct is to send it to our town council. But before we get to that level, I have to accept it. But from what I saw, it was a one and a half page, you know, letter that's there was some area to sign on the back that they would get into this agreement. And that's not what we're asking for. We're asking for um, to get down to uh, letter D, 
which is the EOEA's review. Just send it to them, prove that they sent it to them, and then that's what's going to take some time. I would think, yeah, but B, staff review, that's state review, interagency if applicable, intermunicipal review, modification if necessary, and then you want it up to D, I would think my, a would be so my understanding from so I, I I think I agree with you Becky but my understanding just from what Chuck was saying last time I, I think the staff review is I, I would someone make the analogy of when uh, applicant comes in they talk to Chuck and say Chuck this is what I've put together this is what it looks like does this look right and they say yeah yeah, yeah. okay go ahead and submit it um, that was my understanding of that B process if if that's a longer review pro process I, I agree with you then. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, it's not. not. So this, what's the state review, though? Staff review? Oh, the state. So uh, the usually you send yeah. a draft and you're working with the, um, the EOEA, you know, you're working with Irene Del Bono with when this process happens, so they're not reviewing something that needs a lot of changes. Um, but it, so you know, there's no sign off on B1. It's in I, their I don't court. Think B1 or B2 is more or less the back and forth process, making sure we've crossed our I's, dotted our T's. So the modifications, if necessary, are when the review comes back, back to forth, us, making yeah. new modifications. So B1 seems to be where you would send it to the state, but I thought D would be would be more like it only because there's so much of this complete. Can I ask a question on the B1 where it says state review? Mm -hmm. If there is no modification, is it with the same hands of the people that would be doing the review? No. It goes to EOEA council. That would be, I would, I would say that the state review is probably um, paralegal or something like that or a staff yeah so I'm curious to to walk the cat back a bit this person owns four and a half acres or plus or minus of land yeah and there's a portion of it that's buildable yeah so why wouldn't they just go build the house and go through the process of getting permits and whatnot for that and then decide later on to get a conservation restriction on the property how did that how did the how did the application of a conservation restriction in any way get involved with tying up a building permit? It was part of our order of conditions. How can that be a part of the order of conditions if they could have got a permit just to build on the high and dry land? They, 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 well, they can get they, a building permit any time from the building department. This land happens to be in the riverfront, so in order to move forward with that process, you need to get a conservation application approved. So that process which was reviewed by the state they they're working in the first hundred foot of the buffer zone and the applicant offered the land to us as mitigation, mitigation. for the work this is a full flow river this just isn't a casual intermittent stream or anything no it's full f it's well it's it's, it's 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 dep considers it a river yeah. yeah whatever it is out there it's a river because so that puts it into the 200 foot? Yeah. A 100 and then to the 200 foot riverfront area. Well, yeah. 200 is typically for fencing or straw fencing and things like that. A little more generous than the 100 foot typically that they concern themselves with. The riverfront is approached that it doesn't have a buffer zone. It's all riverfront, but it is broken up into two areas. The inner riparian area and the outer riparian area. The way the Riverfront Protection Act works is that at all costs you need to leave a 100 foot wide um, area of undisturbed vegetation. You're not allowed to go in there unless you work your way through these steps. It's, you know, it's like gates or whatever, however you think about the process working. And then at the end, so they would never be able to build a house there anyway. And F and G requires them to offer mitigation mm -hmm. or restoration. That was their mitigation. So, back to my original question. Mm -hmm. So they never would have been able to get a house built there. They never, they never would have been able to get a conservation permit unless they felt the requirements of mitigation. Of mitigation. 
and it gets to public improvement, which, you know, we, we thought that the conservation sure. restriction on, you know, this nice contiguous wetland area adjacent to the, the river would that, what, that, re that. that removes it from the total square footage of so, the town's Bible photo. And, and, and these things that just, like, come out of space and land on our desk, and we only know that, hey, someone's looking for a building permit, this is 2015 this was issued. All right. The yeah, they've had conditions. plenty of time. Yes. You know, this is not last because, week. This is, <laughs> this is a while ago. Because it was starting to sound like an order of coercion to me, the way you were holding up the building permit against this person donating land to the town. But it was all okay it's clearly, when, it's when they're clearly talking to us, trying to get it to work. This was part of there was yeah. a lot of neighbors here. There was a lot of this yeah. is this is riverfront. This is yeah. like one I'm of the sure only was, spots yeah. in sure. town that was never developed. There are virgin trees out there. I don't know if they're virgin, but certainly large trees. Yes. Undeveloped, not grass, you know, sure. this, all that. This was, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a project that had a lot of attention. As part of the approval of the order conditions, this conservation land was agreed to by the applicant. And so part of that was, well, we don't want them just starting in and never get this turned over. So we made that part of the conditions to say, you need to get no. that process moving before I was you just, ever do. I wasn't glad. Just to, yeah. there, there's clearly a illegal precedent that they have to follow this in order for, for A to become B and become C. This is not just some arbitrary kind of, oh, wouldn't it be nice if they did this no. while they built it. So I just, no, yeah. that was a little fuzzy to me. We so, asked them to do this. Yeah. We asked them to do this. And now they're coming back to us and saying, oh, we yeah, got this piece. We're not catching up. What you, can we you do? You agreed, so move forward, right? Okay. That's what they agreed to. And even at this point where they're saying we cannot do that, what can you do that will work? We're working with them. Yeah. So, you know, they, I understand that they can't wait for the process. Six months, who's going to make them work? But to me, looking at that list, that's a week's worth of work. Yeah. Uh, Most of it's done. Chuck, I would agree. I don't want, I don't, my opinion is that I, I would like it to be in the, the review process with the E, whatever it is, council, because. Uh, they, they had, yeah, I, I, they had plenty of time to get this started. This is obviously just like we every for everything we just said. This was something that was uh, there was a lot of attention to this. Sure. This was a big piece of the order of conditions, and you know I think the the neighbors in general felt like you know, felt like with this project that the commission itself w was giving leeway to the the applicant already. I, I just don't have a, a reason to go any further than seeing that it's in with the state. At least seeing that they've put everything uh, together and that's uh, in for the review I would process. Be, I would be amenable to that A part, that it got into the state. I'm I'm a little leery on the back and forth and back and forth. So Even though, Chuck, you, you say that everything's fine, you know the state. <laughs> they, they can hold up stuff. That's my concern with with uh, what number you're at? B. B1? B1, yeah. I'm not concerned about B2, but B1 is the ones. I'm well, it's, it, and, and, I, and I, now that I have a better understanding of the, especially the age of this, what are conditions? Certainly now at the 11th hour, if that's what they want it to be. They've had three years to get this thing. Uh, it, uh, the exact date. Whatever, two and a half. But it, I think we issued uh, it. And it was in it was in the spring of seventeen, so it's been a year. It's been a year. Well, one year. I agree that there's yeah. there's no precedence here for additional leniency, but I mean, we've been, apparently we've been reasonable enough. Other than there's one thing, it's the guy. It's not the same person, right? <laughs> it's not it's the same. No, it actually developer. transferred ownership. I I think yeah. there's a buyer that hired a contractor to build it at this point, so it's not even the same the same people. Right. So, I mean, they accepted the order of conditions. When they purchased the property? Yeah. Right. Okay, so then again. So they, they knew about it. The border conditions runs with the land. So the person that mm -hmm. took over the right to build took over that, the, the, uh, Cut the ball. everything, everything that was attached to the order conditions. So, but, uh, yeah. which is, you know, I guess that, that's one of those things that they might have said, oh, you know, when they went to think about going to get the building permit and said, there's a problem so yeah. uh, but you know I, I actually agree with Becky it's I think everything that they can do 
up to the point where it goes to that V1, to someone to the state. I think if they get that done and get that filed, I would be agreeable to that. Well, then it takes it out of their hands because they can't reverse the right. process. It's it's a it's a ball in motion. They can't. Right. They can't. Right. But you no, know, they have to. The owner has to sign it. But isn't that upon submittal? No, that's the review. It would be uh, after C between C a council or maybe even after that. But so, are we going to provide a municipal certification yeah. without the owner's signature? Well, I, again, not to be too presumptuous on my part, but if what Chuck is saying, and I, with his expertise, I certainly believe he's correct. If it takes a week to file this paperwork, then just get it filed. Mm. We're not, this is not, just just do it. I mean, because now it's just how much more time are you going to waste for this commission to keep dealing with these convenient, you know. I think they could get down to B1 or be ready at B within just assembling the papers. If a lot of that's done. They have the plan. They just have to market, you know, conservation restriction area. It's one of the requirements. Well, sometimes a little gentle prodding is all that it takes for people to realize. That well, he's been in talking. Yeah. So I agree with just so gentle goes to It seems to like they're just assertive. trying to um, come up with something else. They're, they they haven't, you know, they haven't understood there's no other avenue to go down. I tried to make it very clear, but they keep coming up with, you know, half. Well, the letter from the attorney doesn't say anything, but he's been retained. It exactly. Doesn't, it doesn't say anything about the proposed timeline or we're, we're doing this, we're doing that, yeah. we're doing this, and we'll have this by this date. This is the stages, this is this the schedule. Is just, this is this just is no right. smoke. Yeah. Right. And from what I, from That's I, what I, I Everybody knows how to write letters like that. So, so my take is, I mean, uh, uh, most of the commission seems to be in consensus that we want to see more. We want to see more steps, and I guess sounds like what you've been telling them, you should be continuing to tell them that. Well, well I'm going to tell them instead of at D, we'll we'll accept, you know, right right at the point of B. All of A. Yeah. All, yeah, all of A. All of A. Including the municipal certification, yeah. because that shows that we've accepted everything that they've done. So they can't put. Uh, incomplete application in front of you and say, well, we're su we've submitted this to the... Well, they might. <laughs> but we wouldn't sign off on it, right? Right. So I, I guess that's the that's the benefit of having that municipal certification mm -hmm. piece of it. Mm -hmm. We want to take to the part that we're happy that they're with what they're going to submit to the state. Right. Uh, and then at that point, then I'm fine with that because we've had our checks and balances. Okay, we all set with this? Good yep. Okay. All right. Being past 7:30, um, uh, I make a motion to continue 15:03. I don't think we did that before. We. I think, I think you're right. 15:03 uh, lot A and 15:03 oh, lot A. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? And I make a motion to continue 15:03 lot B. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Second. Being 7.30, we have a request for determination of applicability of 2018-430 Glenmere Circle Map 115 and uh, Lot 96 Windsor. And I guess there are some of you that um, met with Mr. Moses out on the site on Monday. Mm -hmm. And Chuck, would you like to... Oops. Control, control shift plus. That was hairy. This hardware hairy. <laughs> yep. Hardware hairy. Yeah, so uh, me and Dave Finette, Mr. Finette went out there and we just and met um, the applicant's representative uh, from the tree company, uh, Bob Moses. And we discussed the trees. We mostly concentrated on the trees that were on, uh, let's say, the east, the east side, west, west, on the west. And um, 
just those lots. So L K I J H F G C D E B A. So we checked into all those. Not so much B and A. I think they were already taken down. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, but the rest of them we did we did have a discussion about um, and I made I made some notes, but. You know, well, I don't want to jump ahead of you, Dave. If you want to, if you want to say something, but I was going to skip right to. I, Bob's I when, when we made the discussion, we were observing the trees that were there. Um, there were some observations about a couple of trees that we had discussed when we met last time, uh, particularly trees F and G, um, and the things that I saw on trees F and G. Uh, certainly changed my opinion for those two trees, particularly uh, given the the, uh, the damage to the trees that were there. Uh, that, that wasn't really something I, I really saw the first time that we went out there. Um, but it was my thought that uh, E, H, K, and L were the trees that were going to remain. Uh, I is a little bit misplaced there. That's so it's kind of off to the left where the A and the word area is. That's the large uh, split uh, trunk pine. Uh, so that uh, it was my understanding, uh, it was my thought that when we were out there that I, J, F, G, and D were the trees that were going to be removed on that right side. The, in the, uh, the rest on the right side were going to remain. So it was my understanding, E, that was my thought, E, H, K, and L were going to remain. And the remainder would be removed. And, and all of those on the left-hand side would be removed as well. Including M? M is going to go. Yeah, we had a discussion with Mr. Moses about that. And, and he, uh, gave, I don't want to steal your thunder, but he ex explained to me that for that species of tree and most deciduous trees like that, you really don't want to um, remove any more than 25% of the crown at any one time uh, because you put the, the tree in serious danger of, of uh, loss of, of um, uh, food going to the top of the tree. Uh, and it was also a split in the, the trunk and also the, 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 the stump at the bottom actually had a hole in it. Uh, and that was some of the pinched as well. So. Uh, given the amount of trimming that would have had to have been done on tree M, for what he explained, I don't think it, uh, it was going to survive, uh, given the severity of the trimming that would have had to have been done to M. Chuck, did you have any? Yeah, the, the only thing that I was, um, you know, I listened to Bob and uh, me and Dave didn't really discuss this too much, but G could stay. And for G or for G, not both of them, not both, okay. and they were close together. And and it, in my in my opinion, after talking to Bob, asking him a few questions, that the red maple F had dieback at the top, and um, he was saying something about the roots and. But also, he was saying that red maples are very hardy, and they st tend to, uh, you know, survive. So a lot of the root damage was done by the homeowner when he grubbed out all the. Um, he did grub out like a ten-foot area of all the um, poison ivy. The reason why I wanted to leave the red maple is because I wanted to create that area in there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not married to it, but I, I don't, the reasons to take it down didn't outweigh the reasons to leave it. And for that reason, I, I wanted it to stay. Yeah, so if you've got F in there, I can see what you say, F or, or G, whichever, but you kind of go E, F, H, L, K, you've got a nice little corner alignment. We're not leaving one of those out there that's never been hung out, particularly E, the largest one, yeah. you know, all, all by itself. Other than the... Is the, is the tree we're talking about, the one that we pointed out, they got damaged, it was the big one, right? No. No. That was... Uh, that's H. That's H, yeah. Red maple, roots damaged by owner. I have that note. Okay. The 
biggest one, that's age. Yeah. That we just uh, thought should stay definitely. Right. And I, if you don't mind, I just printed for you guys to keep so you have this literature and you should read it. It's about the devastation that poison ivy can do. Keep it for your record so if it comes up again. Um, pretty much outlines a lot of the stuff I talked about at the last meeting that it does travel underground, it can choke out the trees and cause their demise. So, you know, if other uh, suspected people come in and want to talk about poison ivy, at least you guys have something of a reference you can go back. My, my other observation that I made was, um, although the trees had poison ivy vine on it, the ground where it was grubbed out, I only saw one plant uh, kind of reestablish itself yeah. uh, with, with poison ivy, and it was it was kind of in the F H area. Yeah. Carl had made it, had gone up as well, and made that. Yeah. So I circled, coincidentally, H F and G. I circled those and thought that they were in decent condition from what I can see. Mm. And I think I have a picture of F with one that looks like dead, which means it could come back, but dead poison ivy vine up the middle of it. And I thought that the grub looked better than... I, I didn't realize they had done that. So when I went there, I was thinking, geez, where's all the poison ivy? <laughs> but yeah. So... The things that I saw the other day that I didn't see the first time I was out there was the damage, that, the die back and the damage that were at the top of the trees, F and G. Yeah. There was definitely damage on, on both of those trees at the top. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought, now that we're going there, there's this old news, but the, was it N? N, I think, the picture of when we had the five inch, you know, Poison ivy the poison tree. ivy, literally a poison ivy tree that yeah. suffocated in. I mean, I yeah. think that's an extreme case that would justify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty. That was. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything so. No, I haven't. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I. But when I circled H, F, and G, I just kind of clumped those together and said, "Okay," because I don't know. I didn't think that they were beyond repair. But so at this point, are we in agreement on keeping L, K? H and E at, at this point, yes. at, in the I, least. It sounds so yes. what we're what we're parsing mm -hmm. over here is F and G. The other, I guess, the other point um, was that G is a white oak, and it's yep. not probably, perhaps, not yep. as hardy as the red maple. If I can interrupt, it's a white ash. Oh, it's a white ash. Yeah, and there's another one that is in the neighbor's property. The one that was behind the shed there. Yeah. Those were the two white ashes. Right. I believe they're on here, but I think one was up opposite the fence, I think. It is. I, I thought the two white ash. I thought the G. The white oaks are further to the back, which would be L and K. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So what species is, is G? G was also that smaller oak that was on. Right. That was the uh, that right. was the white oaks. White oaks. Right. <coughs> Know that they do have to at some point. But you would also observe that you were going to have difficulty getting in with the stump grinder. Um, for F and G? For, right. If you, if you take if you down G, are you going to be able to keep right. F? That was kind of the, the point. Um, there was going to be some difficulty getting in to grind the stumps for well, either F or G, or both of them. I think the point I was trying to make about the stumps is a little bit tight difficulty-wise, but when you look at the crown of the tree, if you think of underground, the roots go the same way. Those trees are all grown so close together that all the roots are intertwined. Grinding one stump that's four or five or six feet away from another one, you're going to do detrimental harm to the roots of the other trees. So that my only reason I had recommended oh, the three yes. to go was for the know, grinding, not grinding the roots because of the grinding poison ivy underground. I would clear that, that area. The but the tree. Again, that's right. So, so that area is not is potentially not going to be cleared, and it's not going to be open for lawn or anything like that. I mean, you have the option to cut it flush and not grind it if you're worried. Correct. It may not be a good remediation for the yeah. reason I've So that, yeah, that if you could read happen. some of that literature I gave you, it'll specify that it does travel on the ground. Okay. 
<laughs> we're uh, we're certain on on four of them. I I could I so, could forego. Well, can I ask you a question? So does so the applicant is fine with? I, I mean. It, you know, I, I think we, the applicant came in last time thinking like, oh, all these were going to go and, and they took some, and that's why we went back out there. Right. They are fine with, they are also fine with LKH, I mean, obviously it's our cards, but LKH and E, mm -hmm. and do they have, uh, do we know, do they have an issue with F and G? They wanted and to take F and G. Because of poison, poison ivy, ivy that we and 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 we think that that area has kind of been grubbed already, even though it's, it's growing underground. Uh, uh, it's growing underground. But in, unless you tilled the entire rear yard, how would you? There, it would be impossible to clear cut every tree in the yeah in the wetland, uh, <laughs> and it would still travel. You know, I mean, I think I think that the client. I mean, I have it on my property. You have to keep up with it. You do. I think you, yeah. you know. I, I cut a couple vines every spring, and well, doesn't poison ivy become poison oak when it starts to climb a tree? No. Uh, I don't know. Sure. No. Quite different leaves. Poison, poison. He thought poison oak, a uh, poison ivy when it climbs a tree becomes poison. Poison. It's a different um, plant, and yeah. it's also to speak of that. There's really three main characters: oak, uh, ivy, and sumac. But it's all the same erucci oil that causes the infection. That same. Well, they all have oils. Yeah, they, they yeah. all just you know discharge, God, but uh, the plant itself is different. Plant. Oh, I just saw that. So I, I guess I would concur, just based on what I'm hearing from everybody, I drove by, I didn't end up going back there, but I thought I saw kind of the same thing, and I, I certainly didn't have the view uh, that everybody else did, but I thought I saw kind of the same thing. I guess I'm in support of just I exactly what Chuck said. If, if this red maple is much hardier and, and probably can withstand that, I would like to keep that, like to keep the line. Um, and I, I think with that line, you know, I, I would, at that point, I don't really care about G. If that that wants to come out, you know, if they want to take that out, yeah, because because J is that's one that's already broken off. I is actually not even in that line. Yeah, you uh, had it over next to the yeah, A of the. E area. is E is and, and C and D are kind of just these little gnarly stumps anyway. So yeah. C and those A B A B C A B C and D uh, they're kind of out of the picture at this point. Yeah, right. did um, C and D. So it's really. Um, you know, we're, like I said, we're just really parsing on whether they keep F and G, keep F, get rid, uh, keep G, get rid of F, uh, or vice versa. Or, so, um, I, I guess I guess I said my piece. So, I wasn't there uh, this week. I was there last week. So once again, it's a matter of memory. Did I not recall that I think it's E is considerably taller than the others? Yeah, oh, yeah, and it's very, very big, yeah. It's and the applicant said that they want to leave E. They, oh, leave they it. always yeah. want yeah, to leave it. Yeah, they're foolish thing to get rid of that tree, I think. Yeah. But my point would be that it's we're not creating a grove of like trees no. by keeping F and G, no. because E is obviously a significantly different tree yep. than is the small group that, that follows behind it. So Did I guess what I'm saying is it's part of my thought that I would want to favor, I think, as much as we can, I would want to favor the homeowner's ability to to get rid of as much of the poison ivy effectively now as possible, since we're thinking of trying to build the yard for, for kids to grow it. Mm -hmm. So, If I could interject something about the species that you folks have talked about, remaining and the size and the condition. The two ash trees are in stellar condition, which is uncommon for this area. The ash trees are very susceptible to disease called vascular yellow, and the emerald ash borer is prevalent around here, but those trees are in great shape. The two white oaks in the back, although they have some vine climbing, they're in great shape. The biggest red maple is the one that got damaged from the excavation. Uh, some structural roots, the bark is sloughed off from the machine. Um, the smaller of the trees, the red maple, that's in question, the oak, the small oak, uh, there were three of them in that cluster, I think, two red maples and one oak. Um, those trees are probably in the, less, the least favorable condition. Now, red maples are very uh, 
aggressive growers in wetlands and they, they're very hardy. Uh, but as Dave pointed out, the one that's the bigger one does have some crown damage. Um, although I'm not an arborist that's into cutting trees down for the wrong reason, I personally think in that this particular case, if those three trees went, I think it would allow the other trees to flourish and remember now, trees all fight for competition for water, for nutrients coming out of the ground. And a lot of times when they don't get proper, they can suck up gallons of water every every hour. And so there's competition. And also poison ivy vines, pacasandra, all its competition. I think if a little more was taken out of that area, it would be better for the plants and trees that are going to be made. And you're not really allowing them to, I mean, we're not leaving stellar trees. We're leaving the best trees, the ones that I believe you allow them to take down. I would recommend, I think, would be better for the landscape and for the health of the other trees. Yeah, we haven't talked about that. Thank you. It's time to make a decision. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, I think I would allow F and G to be removed. I would as well, but retaining E, H, J, and K. I don't think there's any. Uh, H, K, E, E, H, L, and K. Sorry. Right. J is I don't think there's any question yeah, on those no. four. Yeah. I could agree to that. <laughs> okay, so 70 trees are being taken down at 30 Glenmore Mirror Circle. How and many four are being saved. If how it's saved. It's how many now. actually go to the inventory? The what what actually counts to something that we would be looking for replacement and well, some of them were dead and down on the ground. I would say C. I thought I had do you do you have that? I thought I had this all saved from right last year. Right uh, right there, it's the size. And it's the no. A is a stump. B is a stump. C is broken. Yeah, D is broken. J is broken. Do you want to plant a stump somewhere? Yeah. Let's put this stuff. <laughs> so it's A, B, C, D, J? Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. Uh, can, can I, this is, uh, again, point of information, Doug, just not a good memory of this. They have proposed actually running a hedge along the back against the, the old stone right. wall. Correct. And were yeah. they not planning to put in plants that were acceptable as substitutes? Yeah. Yes. They yep. were? Okay. Yes. Yep. So yep. they could yep. easily put in a dozen across the no, We need to know which ones. If they're dead, we don't ask for a replacement. Right, I understand or, that. So we need to come up with what is viable and what is being taken down. So Chuck, would we say that everything on the east side, One, two, Q, three, four, is that a Q five, or is it an O? Q, eight. P, N, and O are alive and should be replaced? I've got eight. My count is eight live trees. Is that what you've got, Chuck? That's what we, on the site visit, that's what we discussed, right? So we have eight trees that would... That makes sense that they have yeah, one, two, out of what, out of three. what's being taken one, two, three, eight. Four, I have eight five. as well. Okay. One, two, three, yeah. four, saving four, and then there's five that are just junk. Yeah. Yep, I have eight. That, that makes sense. Sounds good to me, eight. Okay. And they, and they had, like... 24, isn't there a note there, like 24 of the... Yeah, uh, they... Of the dead bushes? <laughs> they have um, either clethra sweet pepper bush or high bush blueberry. Right. Two per tree removed. Two per tree removed? Two per tree. So okay, what about what about tree re replacing a tree with a tree? We could do we could ask for that. Because I, I thought it was very open there with all the neighbors. 
So I felt that if we remove all four of those on that east side, which was nice, I suppose, but you're opening up so much light. I don't know. It almost felt like replacing where Q is that a Q Q? Yes. Almost as a nice buffer to have a you know maybe a red maple or some sort replaced in the corner there. I think that's a great idea. I mean, in general, so we we have a general rule of thumb about like what our replacement ratios are, and and we've kept that in, intact for the the tree replacement policy, which is intended for a few somebody coming in and replacing one or two trees. But when we get a a large quantity like this. I don't want to see 16 bushes put back in replacement of a trees. I would like to see some something that's actually larger and can establish, and so that 20 years from now that it's something really nice. Mike, if I may make a recommendation, and I don't know if the board knows this, but the town is allowing them to take a sugar maple out front that's in tough shape. It's not in the conservation, uh, not disturbed zone. Uh, I'd like to see a couple of nice when you talk to them about this, a couple of nice big flowering trees or something in their front yard because they're, they're losing the sugar maple on the front. It's partially in decline, not terribly. It could be pruned. Um, that would be nice, but we are actually more focused towards the wetlands. Oh. So when we are replacing, we're looking for native. And in this particular area, the wetland area is right, right there at the end of the lawn. And we'd actually like to see from the edge of the wetland out to the upland 25 feet of a natural vegetation. Yeah. yeah. yeah right that's, so that's ca that's Very kind good. of where we go with, you know, replacement. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. That's like Charles' idea of the red maple back in that corner. I think it's a great idea. The yard would look good. Yeah. Well, so in general, the, the what we have you know, within our, our tree policy, where again, where it's a, a general removal, it's two shrubs, for uh, was three four uh, isn't there one that's three I, I'm really bad with the table if they're but smaller if it's smaller, really really small years, shrubs right. it can be three if it's uh, a decent sized shrub it's two and then there's a certain size diameter tree replacement that counts as a one to one okay um, and I would like to see at least four of these be yeah. like uh, even a couple of woody shrubs yeah I think some shrubs and some trees would be or how about just throwing yeah, this out which is would be nice because they're taking that red maple out where M is that maybe one gets put back in the corner behind where Q is and then maybe a little bit over towards the middle but maybe they put another red maple small tree in the middle so so in in light of what we've been doing recently a, I don't know that we want to do the planting for them, for right. like the location. And then, is there also considering the size? Is mm -hmm. there some thought that, like, I mean, just like we've done with other ones, I, I'm trying to think of what the recent project was where they had, uh, they came to us and they just had said, oh yeah, well it was located like this on the the order of condition. What's the new Veterans Way? I, I'm confusing. Uh, veterans no, way. it was. Um, uh, uh, um, you talking about where they build the boat in the pool? <laughs> No. No. It's across from the cemetery yeah, on, the one on Franklin the Street. Cemetery. Oh, uh, yeah. Um. Lynetta Lane. Lynetta. Lynetta Lane. We, yeah. We'd ask them to really think about because you don't want right. to just put these anywhere, right? You want, there, there needs to be some true thought to how these get planted so that they survive. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. So, yeah. I mean, I'm up to second that. I think there should be some, some cover. I think it's, I think it's a combination. Somewhere. Um, yeah, sure. And if we could establish a 25 foot buffer back there, perhaps, maybe not. I, w I wouldn't want to compete with the trees that are being, that are remaining, but the rest of it I think would be. Right. But I think we already gave him permission to put a stone wall yeah. back there, right? At the, 20, at the easement. At the, at the edge of lawn. Mm -hmm. We had already said that he could Which put a stone wall there. Oh, so now where are we going to put this? I mean, the given vegetation. the fact that this is property, if he agrees to putting in certain trees, it's pretty much up to the homeowner where he puts it. Yeah, them, right? that's fine. We generally like to see where he plans on putting what uh, the planting plan, right? To a degree. Uh, yeah. So the, you know, the discussion isn't closed yet. So that's really all there is to it. And the, yeah. and the owner's not here, so when he had an opportunity to show up. He should show up. His representatives here, but maybe we should just say. By the eight trees that he needs to replace, we need four to be replaced by trees, and the rest some woody vegetation 
and we'd like to see a plan. And if you want to push the 25 foot buffer, I mean, I, does that make sense? I would love it, but you know, I would love it if it was somewhere else. But these guys, these guys only recovered 10 feet of um, wooded kind of vegetation. The rest was historically lawn. Yeah. So there's only 10 feet out there that mm -hmm. they grabbed. You know, it, oh, I'm saying grab, but it's like they pushed the lawn back, or they were trying to push the lawn back. Just ten feet. The rest was always there. Okay, maybe in that, within that ten feet. Yeah, you can do a three foot. Yeah. You know something, uh, but. So I think they've got some guidance as what to come up with. I think you can kind of help. How many trees? So four trees. At least four. If they want to do all trees. eight. That's great, but I don't Sorry. think they're going to want. Eight, eight Woody Sherms. Right? Eight Woody. And then are we just going to re request a planting plan mm -hmm. to be approved? I think they should. And a vegetated buffer strip. And a buffer strip. Yeah. And that's where the trees and shrubs are going. It would, would be typically asked to show the trees. Can they put an X to write X in the trees that are here? Well, they're going to have to come back with a plan because I heard someone say we're not going to design it for them. <laughs> so it doesn't look like this can be closed. Okay. Do I, I don't think so. I think they've got. I. I, I, don't I think, think we've agreed to what's being removed. What we think it's is an acceptable, you know, kind of schematic as a plan mm -hmm. um, for reputation. And I agree. We've I, made some progress. And also this. give an opportunity to yeah. talk about what we've kind of yeah. almost they decided. Yeah, they might want to. No, absolutely. Yeah. Chime in yeah. now that we're close to agreeing. I make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Thanks for showing them around out there. All right. I'm, a, I'm actually going to sit in for uh, Mr. Green here, too, because I'm involved with his project. So you don't you got to run and get pizza for him when I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the pizza goes well with. That's what it is, but all right, we have a request for determination of applicability 2018 5, 1391 Main Street, Map 56, Lot 10, and Mr. Green. And So Mr. Green uh, got contacted the office. He had a couple of trees that he wanted to he wanted to take down that are around his property. And um, again, the policy that the commission came up with was anything over five trees, anything that I was uncomfortable with, bring to the commission. And uh, so this, instead of being part of the tree policy, where it would be more or less my decision to move forward. It became a request for determination of applicability. Uh, we received a plan from Mr. Green, and I walked the site originally with Mike and Anika Scanlon, two commission members, and the second time I walked the site with Mr. Panette. Um, we, me and Mr. Panette, uh, measured uh, those two lines represent measurements to the best of my ability from you know not having a survey plan but the trees that they're pointing to are basically 100 feet away uh, one's 90 feet away uh, we thought the ones that are in this area here if you can see the cursor uh, were outside the buffer zone uh, that was our opinion it doesn't show that on the plan that I drew but I think that the location of the trees and whatnot so more or less those two trees are not part of this discussion uh, so anyways I, I brought this plan together and then this black area here that uh, I drew in was an extension to the aerial photo that shows the wetland uh, and again, uh, me and Dave are out there, and we were trying to look at where the wetland would be, and more or less it's either right there where I've drawn it, or maybe two feet further or closer to the wetland, two or three feet. So, you know, this has a plus or minus of maybe five, five feet of 
width of professional judgment based on your, your buffer zone. Um, I would tell you that the driveway is uh, completely undone by the roots of the trees. They were allowed to grow many years and have worked their way and undermined the driveway all around. And a lot of those are, are dead out by Main Street. Um, but there are other ones that um, you know need to be discussed. So I know that uh, Mike was there, and I know that Dave was there. So I'll uh, stop now and hear what two members that were out at the site have to say. Yeah. So um, now I don't remember when I walked this. This was almost a month ago that I, I walked this. Well, the, the, what I do recall, yeah. um, and, and so I don't recall specific trees. I, I will. <laughs> what I do I'll give my general. I do recall that, I mean, everything up in this area I felt like was really in poor shape and dead. Um, I do recall one of these up over here, Chuck, I, I don't know which one it was, but had a, a nest in it and it seemed like it was pretty active. Um, so uh, we, re we checked the nest and Dave and I agreed that Dave, Dave came to the same conclusion that I did. Mm -hmm. that we didn't see anything on the ground the around ground the area. nest. Yep. Um, it's, and that was twice that I was there, and Dave had some other conclusions. But but it came to the fact that you know, it didn't, and then Mr. Green said that he hadn't seen anything out there either. So I've been watching. For, excuse me. I have been watching for that check since we came in and discussed that. And we thought it was just going through the policy. I've watched it all season. I haven't seen any indication of anything happening here this year. Um, as had, you it, had you seen anything in the past? Was it? Yes, <clears throat> at one time it was. It's, it's a it's a big nest. It's a at stick nest, time, right? Yeah, I've seen nothing there all year. Uh, what, what did you see previously? Uh, any activity? Was it a red tail hawk? Maybe? No, no, no. It, yeah, it appeared to be a crow. Something that's seriously black. I think it was a crow nest. There's, there was uh, plastic bags in the in the tinder that was in there. Hawks usually don't use trash in their necks, so it looked like a crow's nest to me. Um, uh, just along the the, the line, I, I thought there were some that appeared to be um, either leaning, you know, the the branch started to leaning over the house. Um, they seemed to probably have been damaged during the the big storm that damaged everything this season. Uh, I, I did have some concerns. Some of them, the way it looked is if you cut those, the, the, there's probably a, another tree right into it that's probably not on your property that may end up going to. There was one that I really recall was leaning right towards the, uh, the neighbor's house um, that they were almost, the, the trunks were almost right next to each other. Um, so that was down the, the side. Um, at the back, I don't recall. I, I, what I think what I do recall is that cluster of three back there is, I think one was like really grown right into uh, 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 one of them and I felt like, hanging. Um, yeah, one was hanging, it was probably in a horrible, it was in poor condition and it probably really took down the other tree. But maybe there was one of those three that I thought really didn't, you know, have, I didn't, I didn't see any reason that it needed to go, but um, that was, that's my recollection and I, and I stepped on a landmine. I remember, I remember that. So someone's going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> but that was. That's well, I think this is the tree that we. It was like a small sapling, something like that. I didn't understand why that one was going to be. Oh, yeah, I didn't even. Yeah. I forgot about that, too. But, you know, there's a lot of trees here, and it's hard to identify. I, I, my observation was that. Mr. Green wanted to cut down these trees that were that were encroaching into his yard, and he had, seemed like he had put up with them for a long time. And that uh, each one of them had a replacement tree pretty close behind it. So I know that I talked to Dave about this when we we're out there. We didn't think that we we're going to lose any shading into the wetland or any tree canopy. And I mean, maybe replaced within a year, may not even go away with any of these trees being cut down. It was, I mean, it was very selective. It doesn't look like it is because it's 26 trees, but 
there's a there's a lot of trees behind these trees, and they're and they're tight. They're right up against there. They all go into that, you know, and to try to fill that light, and they all grow there. So they're more dense at the edge. Having removed many trees in my life, it's it's amazing how fast a tree left behind that can now grow oh, yeah. will fill out and just replace any shade that you might lose. Trees too close together just. They just don't do each other favors. And as Chuck was saying, one of the things that I was looking for as we were looking at these is that they, these were all marked with orange surveyor tape in the trunks. And as you looked at the trees as they were marked with orange surveyor tape, there was something either right behind it or very close to it that would uh, be a surviving tree that would actually take over for the ones that were being cut down. Is there one off the property? Yes. They're going to take that one down at night. <laughs> it was one that was on, on the corner that was on your neighbor's there property? Is, there is one on the corner that's on my neighbor's property. However, it needs to be that anything I'd like to <coughs> take away from it's been battling the same overgrowth that we have. I've been there for 25 years. He's been there for probably close to 18. <coughs> um, and we've lost a tree that was that's not on here, that was just behind there. Yeah. That was substantial. That ever came in the way of either of our properties. It had devastated whatever was in its path. So your neighbor is in agreement <laughs> with you with that particular tree? Yep. Do you it's think also you outside of our jurisdiction. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's one of those two in the court. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. It's okay. Not, I was going to ask you to get some, yeah. uh, a letter or something, but if it's outside our jurisdiction. We're, we're approving 24 trees, if, if that's the full number. Can you show what, what's in our jurisdiction? Sure. Well, we get the, we get the 90 foot line, we get the 100 foot line in here, so it probably goes like that. This is my plus or minus five feet. Yep. Okay, so all the rest are within our jurisdiction. Okay. And all of them are not in good shape, right? I, you know, there wasn't, the, each one was quite tall. Well, a lot of them, they, you know. Okay. So generally, a lot of them were very tall and, um, you know, had been there a very long time. They may have, they may have more time to be there, but uh, I think that they had, you know, they had full life. I mean, time to I guess my reason the is time. Oh, so, uh, so I, I would disagree. <laughs> the trees behind it, they weren't in the best no, I, shape. I understand that. I'm just up. trying to get an yeah. idea. Are these trees that we we would want either a replacement or? You know, how do they how do they fall or fit in with our our tree replacement policy if they do it all? I understand that they should be removed because of the so compromise of the driver. Recognizing, I think, uh, Mr. Green, recognizing the fact that he may not want to go through this again and he want to preserve any driveway that he may intend to put in in the future. He wouldn't want uh, to. He offered that. to, even though this is an RDA, to pay uh, or to donate five hundred dollars to the tree fund. So two trees or so will be planted somewhere I, I in town. Think, I don't have problems. No, no, I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, you guys, I no, unfortunately I just, didn't see it. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. don't mind me, Chuck. I was, don't say what? <laughs> no, I, I, so um, I guess the only other thing that, that I would want to see in addition to that is we did see, I, I, what the other thing I do recall is uh, on the, the northwest corner of the house, there was some lawn debris. There was, uh, I think, some uh, like trash that was down in. I don't know if it was in the wetland area or just on the edge yes. of it. Uh, if I could, yeah, I've been planning to take that out. It's all tree clippings that have fallen from this winter storm. Yep. And that'd be gone with it. Okay. I'm just that's there, so it's not my driveway. Okay. And, and I think there's some like. Was there a lawnmower or older lawnmower out there and some the mower like is there. storage yes. and I'll buy the garage? I'll get that out of there. Um, and most of the other stuff is already gone. Okay. So would you? Uh, this is my proposal. You guys don't have to accept it. So there is several piles of 
trimming and leaf and yard clippings and things like that throughout. And in lieu of $500, if we made that proposal, because that's probably, if someone had to go in, there might be $500 worth of work there to remove those several piles of yard, yard waste and, and grass clippings. So I guess my thought was, you know, Five hundred dollars is generally what we ask for for two trees being removed, not twenty-four. I, and I understand that I don't necessarily see a spot to replace twenty-four here because there's such great growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I, I, my initial thought was that's an addition, um, the removal and the, the the shade tree fund. I, I mean, this is a, a substantial amount of removal, mm -hmm. whether or not it's. And, and again, I don't think it's 24 that it would actually go to that inventory. You know, I, I, like I said, I think all five or four or five or whatever is in the front. I don't think we would ever count that. To I think we're down to single numbers, low oh. single numbers of trees that represent something. We would ask for replacement. We would ask for replacement. I mean, there's the ones close to the house are very close to the house and overhanging the house. Yeah. And the ones by the driveway were, were a lot of those are dead and anything no. growing underneath the driveway and undermining that, I mean, I mean, that's as good an argument as you can get. Yeah. Well, so, the, you know, we might be five, six of something we'd ask for a replacement for. They, so they don't have to necessarily be more large trees. They could be woody shrubs, right? Something mm -hmm. we were just talking about, something like a witch hazel. There's not something. even a lot of space for that. It, does, um, so it, it, it sounds like it's really close in behind okay. those trees. Yeah. It's all forested. It's pretty dense up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it is. It, it's, uh, I'm not sure that that would even add, more, that, yeah. like that's adding a ha you know really going to add habitat. I, I I completely agree with Dave in that you know you remove this and there's there's still a thick habitat okay. right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll put it to you I, this way: if you had something that you were going to plant. You might walk around this yard six times with that <laughs> yeah. sapling <laughs> in your play hand before you finally find something someplace where you put it. Put it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I I agree. The habitat is good. We're we're not taking a whole lot away from it. I just I would like to see you know as part of this though uh, something to help this, which I think the removal of of that debris, removal of the 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 trash and the stuff that's in that area. Well, in lieu of the $500 yeah. for the tree replacement, since there's no tree replacement, let them remove the trash. I, yeah. I, and I then it's double jeopardy. I think that's a good that makes sense. Given yeah. that, you know, the description of a lot of these trees are dead, that you know, they wouldn't count anyways. I think it's, I think that's a good compromise, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I was just thinking like, I mean, here's something that we we can make sure it gets done. I mean, every time we donate to the tree fund, we're not we're not really sure where the tree's going, or we have no control. I want to see it here. This is something we have control of, and, and there's a lot of trash up there. Not trash. It's 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 yard waste. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, I want to see it here. I think that's part of you know. Every time we we talk about the removal, we're talking about restoring the habitat and protecting the habitat, I think this is a move that will protect this habitat a little bit more. Um, and it comp, you know, comp, that, uh, content, well, whatever it is, it compensates for the trees that are being removed. All right. Question. Where does he stand with whatever trees that you allow to take down that have totally devastated his hot top, his driveway? So when a hot top contract comes in here, they probably have to dig out the roots and probably some of the stumps. Is that allowable? Because I know a lot of times you guys like to leave the stumps for the natural habitat, but in his case, there's stumps that are right at the edge of the driveway. And uh, I, I don't, I mean, to try to hot top over that, even if we would grind those stumps, what eventually happens is the stump will compost, decompose, right. and, and then the hot top will sink. Right. And it's, you know, throwing good money after that. So I think you should have some clear hot water. Hot water. It's, it's not a cheap pavement repair, just exactly what you said, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have to go in and replace some road base and, I don't and think really we have, establish something. I, I don't, we're, we're not requiring there. you to keep, you know, like a nine or six foot stump or, or a snag or anything in this case. And I think... It's uh, really underground though, if you flush cut the stump. No, we, I know we I... You can grind it, you know... I, I've seen the grinders... Below, rotten, gray, but you 
don't want to hot top over that because eventually that's going to rot. I've seen them grind out the stump, so I, I know I know what you're talking about. So, so how can that be handled? Yeah, excavation and then uh, of, of the stumps that are, are going to be affecting. The so, but, we, but right on the other side of the stumps, in a lot of that area, there's there's wetland. Yeah, it's I'm very very close. Oh, so I guess you got looking at some sort of too that I'm not sure. I don't know what the what you know your parameters are. You probably have to do some type of if you dig out a stump, it probably if there are materials out there that you can put in the ground that are hardy for the environment, hardy for conservation areas, but also you can pave up to them or on them a little bit. Because we did it at a school in Lexington for uh, bond construction, and I actually brought the material in from New Hampshire. I have that information if you want to read it, but that, that's how that would have to be handled. You already gave us too much to read with this person. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what is that, a binder? Or what it's do you not a binder. About? It's actually, it's, it's um, places when, uh, when they're putting um, this is concrete or hot top over uh, root areas. You yeah. have normally a contractor would put something called dense grade down, yeah. which does not allow nutrients, water, rainwater to flow through. So there is a material that is uh, more porous and it's, it's prepared, it's mixed, um, a mixed soil that does allow the flow, the flow, the fluids to flow underground through it, even though there would be a uh, material over it that's not going to allow the water to go through. I'll get you the information on it. So, so we're not, I'm not so concerned about any water getting through here. It's if you destroy the bank, you're going to be, I mean, some of those are so close, you're, you're going to be working in the resource area, you know, by excavating all that stuff. Now, I don't know if anyone here knows enough about it. Can you cut the tree, grind the stump, the two or five inches, whatever you do, and then shave off the side next to the driveway and nothing will regrow and then you can excavate there and the stump would stay on the bank and on the side of the wetland? I, I think before I could give you the proper answer, I'd have to look at what stumps they are, what species they are, if they you know, can be ground deep enough in that one area and some of the stump remain. Mm. Um, you know, the thing is when the hot top contractors come in, they're, they're more apt to be cowboys, and, yeah. you know, yeah. and just start having at it. So, because they're going to have a machine in there. In his case, his roots are as bad as you and I probably have seen in the ground. Yeah, it's only on that left-hand side. But the left-hand side is what we're concerned about with <coughs> digging it out. I mean, well, there would have to be some conditions on that, and yeah. you can't really do conditions on a, you know, an RDA. I mean, you can, but you can't hold them to it. So check your gray line is the 35, roughly, right? 35. Is that what you're Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure where. So in this area here, I thought that the, like the wetland was very close yeah. to these here. Not sure about it here. So it was kind of lost in that area. So but I got this line because me and Dave measured this. This is 90 feet, this is 20 feet, so I just did 20 feet yeah, right. all the way through. And those trees are at least a couple of foot diameter at least. I mean, they're yeah, big trees, yeah. So what's the decision we're trying to make? So, so I, I guess... I think it's... <laughs> So there's stop the grind, and then there's, you know, remove the, the root ball. They're asking to remove the root ball in close proximity to the wetland, which is going to disrupt the bank and the wetland. And but that but seems to be something like all of a sudden we've been presented with. Are they going to make the driveway wide of that purple? The driveway, no, right? No. no. The footprint will remain the same, but yeah. it's the trees have literally grown sure. from saplings over 28 years into the driveway. Right. The, even the tree itself is. The but you're going to cut those trees down, right? No. Yes. So if you're going to redo your driveway, you're just going to excavate below the surface. What are you going to put? The driveway, correct. So you'd have to remove the roots. It's, they're going to yeah. die anyway. The roots, not the stump. Like right. uh, well, I, think, I think you want it within the footprint of the driveway. I, I think that's where you want to limit your removal to. I think sure. you'll see that a good portion of the actual trunk 
is into the driveway. Okay. Right. So it's not just the roots. On some of them, not all of them. Yeah. I think maybe it should be specified on which ones you might sure. allow them to could get in any like could we have some hay barrels or something that in the meantime he could remove selected trunks for the benefit of his driveway. I mean or so re realistically, we're only talking about the right-hand side of the driveway here. The left-hand side of the driveway, you can just cut those stumps close to the ground and leave them. When you say, when you say right and left, or well, are at the coming in, in, driving in, driving in. Yeah, on the right side, closest to the abutus property. Correct. No, right. those were not the issue. That's, that's uh, the ones the on the left. It was really on the left side where the driveway sweeps in towards the conservation uh, edge. Right, but that goes downhill from there. You're not going to be going down into that that wetland area and excavating those stumps out of there, are you? Those trees are right on the bank. They're right on the bank. Right. All, all of them? Uh, no, pretty much. Well, yeah, well, pretty much. Think, I think. Well, then I don't I understand this, where the wetland is. Then. I, I might, you know, maybe, uh, I think it kind of does something like this, or right. You know, it, it's confusing what it, what it does in this area, but I. I think these are right on the bank. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it would be about three or four trees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so these are the ones, these two in particular are the ones that I see that I'm, I've got concerns with. If you go in there and you're excavating, you're essentially excavating in the resource area. I, I would like what to What about the that. other four uh, uh, parallel to almost to um, 28? They can just be cut. Yeah. yeah. Those those aren't those aren't okay. that close. Those those, are, those aren't as. And the so other two are, closest to the house. Is this actually paved right? I know it's dark, but is this actually a paved area right here? It's no, um hot back. It's oh, piece yeah. So yeah, like so it's not the same situation that no. we've got going on. It, oh, okay. It's these four <coughs> trees that are just really destroying the driveway. Right. And it's these two that I think are on the bank that I I wouldn't want to see excavated out on the bank. I think. But so the first four and the other two beyond that, that two double, they're okay if they got, you know. These, that's these are as close as those are close to the wetland. I don't think yeah, you but need they're not going to pay that area. They're not going to right remove those Yeah, stumps. you don't need to. You can just cut those stumps. They don't need to go all the way up to right, the so edge of those. Stump, right. they They've got a those. lot of room there. Okay. Yeah. So they that that, that section of driveway is very thin. Very thin. It's not wide going down to the left. Going down to the left. No. Right, and that's where the problem is. So, you know, yeah, so the two if, trees he, if he loses six or eight inches, that's a lot in a in, in an area that's about seven and a half feet. I'm I'm just I'm, I'm not asking to lose that that area. I, I'm I'm asking if there's something that you can do to not excavate the bank to it dig out those stones. And then he's going to suffer down the road with. Settling and the top of the sink. Right, I agree. I, I have to. I have to. <laughs> I don't know why this seems like we're getting a field with our, our purview here, but if you take for whatever portion of the driveway that you need to expand to to make it an appropriate driveway, and you grind the stump, and you driveways are only what twelve inches deep with some pea stone and some process material. Mm -hmm. no. So if you're only going down that far just to get whatever stump might be in that vein or that, that surface material, the fact that you've, you've shear cut it right there, I mean, let the rest of the stump rot, but you've pulled out the material that's going to be pretty much problematic, and then you could just fill out with dirt. Let the rest of the stump rot. I would think you'd be able to, even if you put some kind of a, almost like a window well kind of a barrier in there or something much smaller, much thinner, just some kind of a Temporary. I just let, let it let it rot eventually because the, eventually the stump's going to be gone anyway. So whatever you put in there would. I was just asking the question because I'd be the guy grinding the stump, but if a hot top guy comes in and he sees it, he's probably going to say to Mr. Green, "These have to be dug out." And if there's right. no clear decision on it, then he might say, "Okay, dig them out." So at least if it's to be ground, then we'll grind it to the best of our ability. He knows that down the road he could possibly have some sinkage and. Have to I, I think if you get if you get uh, somebody that recommends that to you, uh, what I what I would ask is that you, you contact Chuck, have Chuck go out to see it because we are 
it's unclear exactly how close or how much that stump is invading and, and I mean I, I personally would rely on Chuck to kind of make a, a decision on the RDA for that piece of all right what what can we do to make it work for the driveway and I can be with Chuck out there I've been out there a couple of times with him and we can you know he can he and I can talk about it he can tell me what he wants it's fine by me Chuck I'm offered is that okay with you I mean yeah I mean like, it's it's um any time that we look at a specific area and someone's property it's it's better to go right there because we looked at the whole property yeah I can't remember what what it looks I, like and we might come up with something but I did think that what Bob said you know, I, that's why I asked you originally: Does the roots will the roots grow again? Because it seems like you can shear off one side without a problem and leave the other side there, dig down as far as you want. And my answer was depends on the species. Yeah. Well, yeah. the problem of cutting roots off one half of a tree is now you leave it suspect of being blown over in a big windstorm because it's got no support on one side. No, these are all kinds. No, we're all kinds. Yeah, I know, but that's but not the... Oh, but my point is, that's not the issue here. You're taking away the We want the stump to rot and go away anyway. Right. <laughs> so digging down a foot or two and getting rid of any roots that would be under the driveway, to me, would be a pretty easy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. that's what I... And you I, fill but it the other want. side, and the side stone, on the wetland, we want them yeah. to leave that. But to answer I the question about what we're looking growth, for, and yeah. I remember what we're talking about. We're in wetlands, and that's the periphery situation for things to re-sprout and re-sucker up roots sure. or even above ground so if you do run the risk of that but again i guess i would have to just grind as deep as i could go with my machine and then let them put in some material pack it and then hot top over it and then yeah so could you come in be like a construction sequence they're going to strip back the existing driveway right I'm sorry. They're going to rip back the existing asphalt, correct? Yeah, and they're going to so at really that point, have to scarify the roots out too. Right. There's roots everywhere. So then at that point, right when the asphalt is not even prepped, you could come in with the grinder and I kind of drew, if you were had the grinder on the existing driveway, couldn't you push down a shear right there? I'd have to work in conjunction yeah. with the paving contract. Yeah. No doubt about it in this situation. Right. Sure. So if, if, if there's language between the commission and you know Gabe or myself or both, and you know I'll certainly adhere to that. You know, trucking an RDA like this. I mean, uh, considering these things, but the the paving and the essentially tilling to underneath the pavement. Um, we don't typically for like a tree removal. We don't typically have erosion protection or things like that but I think in this situation it's probably being going to be called for if the work is being performed hmm. at the same time. Yeah we'll see I mean the other thing you could do is like when Bob's out there I've worked with Bob a lot yep. you know we're going to get what we ask for um, and you know I can be there when the paving contractor's there also I mean it's not a big driveway it's probably just the first you know, hour or so of, of, of that just to, to settle that. And if Bob or one of his guys are there, we'd all know what's going on. Um, but if it but if it doesn't work, if, if you know, the professional says this this will never work and all this money you're putting into it, uh, you're just going to come up with a bad driveway again? Because remember, there are other trees just behind these ones. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we need, to, we need to bring it back to the commission and have them come up with a plan and present it to the commission or whatever that's going to be because it seems like excavating in that bank area is going to no doubt alter the resource area and you can't do that with this with this determination of applicability yeah because and if i might add the hot top guys aren't going to care right. they want to come in they want to prep it they want to put the mix down get out and make their money i'm just bringing it up as a homeowner that wouldn't want to have my hot top settling after I spent fifteen or twenty thousand dollars on a big driveway like that, and then three years down the road you start to get dips. So, you know, there's got to be some sort of rem remediation done in that area to at least allow him to get his best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we certainly don't want to be back. So, are we talking about a positive determination? That was an intent. Did this work? I don't think so. I think I feel comfortable with Chuck. You know, as long as there's good communication with Chuck, I, I think he can he can go out there and assess the spe these. Specific so then we need a do we need conditions? I mean, in in my mind, this is doable, all right. But and I'm hearing that it's doable too from everybody talking. I don't know about what's going to happen that actual day though. So 
but me and Bob will go out there again. I, I think that, yeah, we would, what, if you have any conditions that you want on this, such as I should be out there when right. it's happening and, and there's no work allowed beyond, but beyond five inches of the driveway, the edge of the driveway. I don't know what, what how wide you make in this driveway. The replacement was there. Just it's substantially the same size. The whole project was on the table 10 years ago, and I just simply didn't have the money at the time. Yeah. Okay. And so some things led to another. It's, it's literally just this driveway that's there is completely okay. ruined. Yeah. To the point where you just can't safely drive a car on it. You know, without scraping oil pans and. I agree. Snow <laughs> removal. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine. All right. So the special conditions are, um, you know, on um, site. Yep. Um, uh, you know, work. You know, the driveway screen replaced in kind. No work beyond that. Besides the removal of the trees, stumping and grinding only. Yes. And should that be five feet from the wetland edge? What should that be less? Should that be five, a, a certain distance from the wetland? No, we can only go, so so a driveway is basically, if you replace your driveway, it's just general maintenance, right? No, so I understand, but they're doing work beyond the driveway to get the stuff out. No, they're going to try to stay as close as they can, right? Bob, are you going to try to stay as close as you can to the ed driveway edge when you're doing everything but the grinding, like the, the trimming of the roots? I will trim the roots into left the hot top though. But you're going to stay within like five or ten inches of the driveway edge when you're trimming the roots. I can't trim the roots until the hot top guy comes in and excavates the hot top. So yes, I we, we can draw a line. I think the best yeah. thing okay. would be we would go there after they dig, you and I, and we can get some paint and draw a line. And then I'll know where I can grind and he knows where he can dig. So they're not going to work on the other side, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the we had discussed the condition to remove away the yard, yard debris and some of the, the, the waste out there. That's in lieu of a five hundred dollar donation to the tree company. That's correct. Right. Good. Anything else? Um, I do not have, Carl, were you going to say something? No, sorry. Just um, I don't have all these conditions in it, but I've left a space to put these conditions in okay. and the number of trees you're allowing to put down. So I have a permit that you could sign and I could add this stuff later if you felt so inclined. I'm comfortable with that. Okay, do I hear a motion to I make a motion to issue a negative determination for sir. This property. Second. All those in favor. Then you can do a discussion because I have a question. So discussion. Um, are you allowing all the trees to come down? Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. Within our jurisdiction, that's the two that. Are yeah. So outside. it's going to be twenty. Oh, it's going to be twenty-four. Can I ask one question before I depart? And I know the uh, homeowner on Glenn is going to call me tomorrow morning. Is we know what would, did you guys continue this for the Glenmere? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's. We want him to or them to put together a planting plan with four trees and eight shrubs and a vegetated buffer strip using those trees and shrubs. I thought you were going to ask us for the number of the pizza shop. Sorry. <laughs> Four cheese and eight shrubs. Okay. And woody, woody shrubs. Uh, woody shrubs. Woody shrubs. And what about the species on the trees? Do you guys have a uh, specific? They have to be native. Native. But I don't think we right? specifically <laughs> ask for any species. Do you want dwarf or do you want flowering? Uh, uh, I would say of the four, at least one should be equivalent to 
Uh, you know, an oak or a maple of some kind, I would think. Can we give the homeowner a list of acceptable trees well, that everybody have, wants? We have. Yeah, yeah I don't think those flowering ones are on it, but they're acceptable if, if we say it here. If, we, I mean, if, yeah. if, if they're acceptable, they ought to be on a list. I mean, I have a list, but it doesn't have every native tree on it and every native dwarf tree flowering thing. So it's it's not, you know, it's a helpful list, but yeah, it's, it's helpful. Full, so not I just want them to have the information. If it's sure. one, you know, is there such a list? Reach out to him afterwards, or am I going to be the uh, telephone? He can. He can. Uh, so it, it'd be good idea for you to reach out to him. Uh, he can always ask. You know, talk to Chuck afterwards. Tell him to come down on the eighth and meet everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll be back on the eighth. The plan. This is um, the eighth one. Is that when the next meeting is? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, oh, next item well, on the agenda. You have to issue, you have to issue it. Because I stopped you at that discussion point. Okay. So. I thought we did issue. So maybe you did. I don't know. I, I think I voted. So who, the, who issued I it? I voted to issue. Dave, were you second? Well, it was. I think you beat me. So. And I'm going to Dave. Okay. So we're good with this. And three, yes, we have jurisdiction. No, it won't cause, it won't alter the resource area. That's what it says. And three, you're issuing it, checking off N three on the note on that request for determination of applicability. That's, that's exactly negative what it determination. Said. Yep. Yeah. Yes, we have jurisdiction, but no, it won't cause. Okay. Off the resource area. Great. All right, next on item on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Request for determination of applicability 2018 6, 196 Salem Street, map 23, lot 88, Nelligan. Hi. And your name? Discussion. Patrick Nelligan. Okay. Okay, um, is somebody going to talk about this sure. project? Uh, I was contacted by Mr. Nelgan about um, creating, uh, to, to take down some trees in his yard that have, uh, that are a little bit too close to his property. So this property, when the house was remodeled the first time, the commission actually had an RDA on this property, and the guy that did the remodeling just wanted to deal with the house. He didn't want to do any work in uh, where trees were, and he so he didn't push back that canopy at all. Um, but uh, I don't know if Mr. Nelligan did this or someone did this, but there are wetland flags out there, and the blue flags with the um, 10, 10 piece on there to, to write the number of the flag. So the, there was flagging done there, and I think um, me and Dave Bennett were out there, and I thought they were accurate, the ones that were there uh, and still in place. And um, so anyways, we established that, and we established the fact that there are a lot of dead trees that are pretty big um, that are close to the house. But my count is more like 16 instead of what we're seeing here on the plan. And the entire application should be that that box area and this is a yard that has limited space. And I believe Mr. Nigel has a kid. You have a child. Met him. Oh, and I met him. I met him. <laughs> he made a lasting impression on me. <laughs> he must have been a very well-behaved kid. Um, so 
he has he has a child and he wants to kind of create a, a yard and this 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 life essentially has no yard so this there's an area here that's in the red box area that's outside the 35 foot we asked mr nelligan to verify that based on the flags that were out there and um under our bylaws can be converted into something different than a wooded area that is a buffer zone to the to the wetland so the proposal is to turn that area and what's there behind the house that is existing lawn into a better lawn into a lawn area with a fence uh, as I understand it there's not going to be any uh, any um, topsoil going down at this point but any vegetation in there, whether it's a woody vegetation, a tree, or a sapling, is going to be removed. And I'm not sure how that's and how that's going to happen. So that's essentially what we're looking at here. We're looking at the conversion of this forested area that's adjacent to uh, PVW uh, being converted into lawn. So, uh, so, so you, you said there's more than more than five. Trees is more like 16 mature trees, or yeah, are they so saplings, or are they less than you know six inches? There's eight on here, I think, right. right? So when we did the, we went through there. I just made a list of all the trees that were um, marked, and there are. Well, I have, I have I have 14, so I have 14 trees now. So 14, you said several were dead. There's several dead ones. Um, there's is a that in that list. Catalpa tree that's cracked. There's a dead pine, and that's what I have down. I think the rest. There's a uh, in my supplement. There's a Inver Northeast tree that has a list of eight trees on it. It has what conditions they have. Um, there are a number that are dead. There are a number that are hanging over the house. There are a number that have Dutch elm disease. What have you? I'm not your expert. And you also have the the um, the extra large one that's wrapped up in the wires. It's in the oh, correct. It, it, it's in the application. The farthest one south on this map right. is right on the street level. It's hanging over the wires, and it, the top of it is completely dead. Makes you wonder why the town already hasn't removed it if it's so hanging over the wires. It, that's funny. In the, oh, you the know, electric company. The town. I'm not. I'm not sure. You know who did this, but just in back of that red line heading down Salem Street towards uh, Planet Fitness or whatever that is. I was thinking of the Chinese restaurant, but go ahead. Someone back <laughs> in there, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and, and there's maybe 20 or 30 dump loads of asphalt Whoa. Just, just back there. And impossible in this situation to take out. It would take a huge project to get rid of those things to have enough uh, you know juice in that project to ask for that to be part of it it, it was it was pretty upsetting and this uh, gentleman has to live with that he's kind of opening up that area uh, and he's gonna it's gonna be more visible you see it's right along the edge of Salem Street it's and, yep. it's and it's back it's it's along the edge and it's maybe maybe 30 feet back too this is on so that was property? that was yep. dumped there by the contract is oh. that last pay of Salem Street or back in the 50s or whatever mm. It's, it's uncovered. I mean, yeah, I, so I, so. I mean, back in the 50s, would probably be, yeah. you know, there'd probably be more, um, you know, decayed yeah. leaves and dirt and stuff on top of it. This, this, this doesn't this look was crazy. It was shocking. I had a power arc in my, my yard that were there about 15 years. It was actually covered in dirt just from leaf decomposition. So I would think that would be covered if it was that old. Yeah. No, it's. it's it's uh, there's a lot of big chunks out there. It's uh, it's too bad. So, um, so again, uh, you know, th th there's several counts of trees. I don't know exactly what the counts are. I have my list, and I know Northeast has these, and they're calling out Dutch elm disease, and this one's too close, and that one's too close. And we get a lot of that from from Northeast tree. Um, but the, the project to create a lawn where there's not a lawn now and this, this house doesn't have something seems 
reasonable request. And um, none of that asphalt's within the red area, is it? No, it's, I think it's no. just outside of it. It's on the on the line or on the corner. Yeah. Um, but well, I guess we're not going to do any part of the lawn on that area. I'm leaving that alone. Um, I don't really want to pay somebody to come and excavate that. It's going to be more harm than. You can just count the mounds. It would be twenty-five truckloads. Oh my God! Oh, you're kidding really? Jeez. 15, between 15 and 25. There's a lot of material out there. So is it right yeah, here? Or yeah, right on the line. Right here. Can yeah. closer. I think that it's... What do you show me? I mean, that's the area, right? Yeah, that's that's the area, but this is, this is unmistakable that yeah. it's a pile that was just dumped off a dump truck. It's, it's mounded asphalt. Oh, I can actually see it going behind you know, the tree there. Lumps and lumps and lumps of it. So you know? just kept backing up and dumping like a lump, each lump yeah. as a truck. Yeah. Lump. Holy crap. I didn't have my phone with me, so I know That's I didn't take it. Wouldn't it be nice if you find the contractor that did that? <laughs> Make them yeah. clean it up. <laughs> Not to get off the top. Yeah, that, that <laughs> That'd would be, be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, Chuck, this part of Salem Street, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to figure out where we are, but did we have the... Just next door. Yeah. So next there's a door, stream. So on the other side yeah. of this, right? Yeah. Um, now that had a conservation restriction on... It did. We don't think there's anything like that. That, that doesn't extend anywhere. Like, well, it wouldn't extend onto his property. It would No. That might be where the wetland flags came from, though. When they originally, when they did, originally that. did that. No, they, they because that was, uh, his yeah, that was that was done a while ago the, when the houses were built. Oh. And they don't, I mean, they last. I mean, you'd see the silver tag, but you wouldn't see the blue flag. You wouldn't flag. see the blue. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, and out of those 14 trees, there's three, four of them that are three inch. Do we three know? Three inch or less or three inch? Three inch or less. Do we know what we're talking about small. for tree, re tree removal? What, what's Have you tagged them? I, I can tell you what I called out. I called out um, a cracked catalpa and a dead pine. Anything that would be... And a uh, catalpa that was split by the house. So I have three. So That's all I have. So is what there... The pine that was next to the yard near the end of the fence. Um, that was uh, yeah. That was one of those. Leader. Yeah, one of those was was gone. Right. Yeah, the one that was already broken off and laying on the ground, and then the one that was going more towards the backyard that was a, sp a split trunk that was also um, partially already broken off. So the original request was for eight. You yeah. see 16 trees that could easily be cleared. Well, the legal notice or 14 had listed 14 trees. Yeah. 14 or 16 yeah. trees. Was that, was That's that what came up yeah, we, but that was your recommendation with that we listed more bonds. than I saw here on the plan because I wanted to make then sure that you would approve to be cut if you could just say cut them down. What, what do I think? I, I would, I think that he should turn this into lawn if we can figure out the second part, which is how do, how do we, how do we, <laughs> I'm trying to find out. I, I, there creates. are some that are dead, some yeah. that are good. I don't know how many. That's right. I mean, I think that's that we're getting a different opinion from Northeast than. than yeah. What do, I have? What do they? Well, but so, what do you think? I guess what, what do you think is the number? Well, I think it ultimately turns into, you know, the tree policy where it asks for, you know, we, and we just did one with 20, 26 trees, twenty four, twenty four trees, um, and we're only asking. We're only asking for like eight, eight replacements. And, and it seems to be an area that makes sense. It, so there's probably eight that you think count for would count under our normal policy for a replacement. I guess the the question I have is: Is there a way thinking about what would become a yard, and is there a way that we would want to have some sort of replacement that could continue to protect the wetland a little bit better, or continue to protect this area a, a little bit better, like on the edge? Uh, is there something that could go back that would help improve? Um, you know, the, the last. That's all pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. 
and there's yeah. sitting water. Yeah. You're not going to be able That's to not how it is now. anything back here. For half the year, there's sitting water in this area. Yeah. Which is why I've chosen this area. Mm -hmm. It's flat on yeah. the street level. I mean, you could read buffer, check the street. Actually, you can't. That's well, where the piles of macadam are. Yeah. No, in between the two, six to twenty yard line. Yeah. Right. So that's where you want to put fence. You, would you look yeah, at some can, sort of yeah vegetation buffer just for yourself? Right. That's well, from this standpoint. I mean, you, know, you want some privacy. Business. You want to keep yourself away from the road as best. Well, I haven't you hired somebody to give me a quote for redoing it. Yeah. At this one, I want to get rid of the trees, take a look at what it looks like, and then figure out what I'm going to do. More likely than not, I'm going to send this fence along the road. Mm -hmm. I would be open to planting trees around this part of the property so that I don't have to look at the rest of the dead shit that's already down that's in this area. That I don't think uh, Chuck would be too kind to let me uh, cut down or remove from the property. <laughs> <laughs> I would be kind enough to. <laughs> there, don't don't large, give yourself too much credit here, Chuck. There's a lot of space back there. So, um, I'm moving time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we had already said that you could take the, the yeah, tree that only fell one. down, yeah. and that the treetop and all that brush that's there. Yeah. We already said that you could take that out of there. I mean, this, this what's difficult is this is really for lawn. There's not much lawn, and to take any away with this. It's like different situations. This is a different situation yeah. than we want to cite, but I think there's. So, so that's why I'd like to know: is there a way that we could have some sort of replacement or some sort of that is going to protect the habitat? I, I guess, well, I, and I think there's room but for. It, but and again, not to interrupt you, Mike, but if it, if it's that densely forested out there, just adding more growth isn't helping anything. I mean, when you say you're going to protect it, what are you protecting it from? The, the growth provides a buffer from the new lawns, I mean, new water flow, new debris, sediment kind of coming down into there. Correct. Which I don't yeah, but is that going to be talking about shrubs, not trees now? Sure, yeah. shrubs, yeah. Woody, woody I'm, not, I'm not talking yeah. about putting that, you know, uh, a maple that's going to grow just as large. I think you can still have a defined edge of lawn. That's Yeah. yeah. Something that helps. <laughs> Helps to find where the wetland is, where our see right what we now. want to protect is. The top so part of the red um, box where you want to put in a lawn, is that all forested, Chuck? Yeah. yeah that, that's the box is forested too. Right. Yeah. So it's the okay. 16 trees. To I, is this going to be the fence is coming uh, out in this direction here? Are you going back here? No, and I don't even think that. Not doing there either. I don't think I would do this. Oh. There's enough oh, so trees and for privacy on here, right here. Mm. Um, and I'd be happy to put bushes along here, um, and that may be what we end up doing. So this, this, all this area. So this front lawn pulls run into it, right? Mm. I'm not front one could have kind of run into this new proposed. Yeah. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's pretty fair. I think there's definitely room for a few trees that could be replaced, though. I think. But I think to add val aesthetic value, I think it would be nice. Oops. We'll see some flowering there trees. Go. And uh oh. <laughs> we got the idea. I'm well, going down the street, uh, sorry. <laughs> And there were no bounds back there? There were not. We usually put in um, bounds along the 25 foot mm -hmm. so that people don't go back. Or just literally, just as a visual, not to. Yeah, and it usually, they can be concrete, stuck, stuck up a little bit. And they have um, our little logo oh. epoxies on the top. How many uh, good trees does um, Northeast say that's that should be replaced? I don't think they. Yeah, I, don't think they, they, they I don't think they did. Everyone so is has something about it. So Chuck, you you think it's it? I mean, they're, they're not talking about no. it. I know you don't have a plan right now, but are you? I guess understanding kind of what we're looking for. Would you be? 
opposed to having some sort of plan that included like a, a 16 shrubs along this sub stops really anywhere. I want to commit myself to that. Yeah. I'm not sure that your Tom Vila are forcing me to commit to putting anything in. Yeah, we actually have a tree replacement policy. Yes, yeah, but you, I'm not sure that the tree replacement policy dictates what I can and cannot plant on my property. Fair enough? No, I, I don't think you understand it. If you take out a, um, a healthy tree within our jurisdiction, we have the right and, and we have a policy, we worked a couple of years on it, that <clears throat> we would ask you to replace it with a smaller size, I would call it a sapling or a couple bushes. And what we try to do is place it in an area that would provide habitat and, and protection close to the resource area, in this case, your wetland and back there. Oh, I, if, I understand that. Or, I'm saying I'm not going to commit to this specific tree, this bush. No. What have you? We I have a list have of we have a list of species that you can select from. And or you can also donate to uh, a tree replacement fund without having to replace anything on your property. Okay. So we generally require that there is a plan to make this replacement before we approve the removal. Uh, that's that's you know the the plan is open to change, but we you know the as you as you open this area up and you say, well, no, I really it really doesn't make sense for me. To, to put it here, I'd like to move something here. I'd like, but in general, in, in concept, we we like to come up with a plan of what this is going to, what the replacement would be before we approve any sort of removal, or uh, a donation, or a donation. I'm happy to make the donation. Um, I, next spring is when I want to bring somebody in to sort of tell me what would look nice there uh, once this area is sort of flattened and. Is what it is right now. I can't envision what it is because it's a forest. But uh, I, 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 Mr. Nelligan, mm -hmm. I think at this point it's not clear to us what we think is. Um, you know, I, I think there are some dead trees there, um, some that have you know split trunks or whatever. But I think there are some trees based on these gentlemen's observation that there's some healthy trees that would fall under our policy. So I think we need a better idea. Am I correct about well, that? Well, but so I think he's, uh, what he's saying is he doesn't really want to commit to any sort of size. I, I think there are options to replace. I mean, we, we No, I'm not talking about replacement. I'm just trying to get a handle on what is, you know, what's under. What How we, many? Yeah, that's all yeah, I'm talking about right now. So, there are probably five or six maple trees of varying widths and sizes that are in that area. Donation of $500 that the town is looking for that's amenable to pay. Um, I just have to ask. freedom to plan what I would like, you know, once my wife and I get to see this next spring. I'm just curious, Chuck, do you know how many trees up there that you would assume are healthy? Yeah, I would. I Subject to our policy? I mean, you've seen it, Dave, you've seen it, right? Yeah, so there were some. We should know some. what the number is. The kind of tree they are right now is moved. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't. We just need, no, we just need a number. I, I agree. What? I have seven. seven. You have seven. Okay. So I have seven, so. And so I believe what we're trying to convey. So what you're saying is right. anything over six inches. Right. And when you do go to, I think we're trying to say is, right, lay out the lawn, design your trees, you could pick things that you do want, and then there's a few things, right, that we might see that have to be part of that new planting. Right. Is that what we're kind of getting at? Right? Or a donation. Or a donation, right. It sounds like, to me, that that would be the best way out of it, because he wants as much latitude as he possibly can get with this. So we should say yes to an area, and then Whatever you do there is fine. If you end up planting there, that's great. But since we have created the tree fund, or we didn't create it, we just we hijacked it from the DPW department. Mm -hmm. And you can donate to the town tree warden's tree fund five hundred dollars. Usually the check goes to the conservation office made out to the town and we bring it down to the DPW department, which essentially is the tree that forced you to And then 
um, everything else you want to do, it would be up to you. It, except for the size of the, size of the area. And this, we haven't talked about scope, and I was just wondering, what are you bringing in to this area to actually do this? So the Northeast tree will cut down the, cut them down, they usually use a crane. And are you pulling out all the stumps? Of course you are, because you're gonna, are you gonna? They're gonna grind the stumps. They're grinding the stumps. I think, uh, you know, whatever the number is, it's eight or nine, they're gonna grind the stumps. Grind the stumps, okay. Um, you and I you previously discussed that I wanted to get a permit next spring to do excavation. I will uh, it's not something I think I need to do. I think that area is pretty flat. Yeah. So we could just look into my grass and put a layer of topsoil down top. Right. And then you're going to be right hand raking that? Or, you see, or am I going to drive past one day and see a bobcat in there kind of like rubbing out things? I, for the permit, so there's no surprises, so I can write that in. That's why I'm kind of saying you gotta kind of think about how that's gonna happen and you know, say, yeah, I'm gonna use machinery out there because that would be the easiest, or you're gonna be out there with a, you know, if I say hand dig and something else is out there, then, then you know, we get to talk again. So I'm just I'm just saying, you get it, that part you need to kind of tell me where you're at with. Yes, in the spring, I'm probably gonna bring a bobcat in, uh, spread some so usually we allow, you know, so this is that duff layer, the leaf litter, right? So that's probably going to be removed. Mm -hmm. And but we usually allow like two, three inches, something like that. We don't consider that. We don't, you know, that's like modulating something, but but to, for to establish like a, a lawn, soil. like a topsoil, to, yeah, a topsoil just to establish a lawn that's been allowed in the past. So you guys are okay with that, yeah. and that seems yeah. to be yeah. where we're at. So fence, scarifying mm -hmm. lawn, two to three inches of topsoil, and uh, voluntary donation to the to the town tree fund, and have I have the bounds. This is an RDA. So, so there wouldn't be that. It would be nice, but we usually ask okay. with an RDA. All right. Do I hear Any, uh, anything else? No? How's that? Is yes. that just clear? Um, everything? Just if we can briefly discuss so that I don't get myself in trouble, um, if you are inclined to agree to it. There's a tree back here that has the 45 degree split in it. Um, that's on the 25 foot marking. Um, is that a tree that you would want me to keep um, at 10 feet? I don't know if you specifically remember. I mean, so a tree broke off about 10 feet above the ground and it's just lying there. It's a I don't know what do I don't know what the term is, but most of the trees like hanging on the ground. And then it's hanging into his into the into the red box area. But it yeah, it's I, I don't know where it's down into the twenty five buffer. Right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a hazard. There's no fence back there, young child. So obviously we're gonna take down and out that piece that broke. And now, now with the stump that's ten feet tall, you're asking to take that out also? On that tree, no, I think that's the corner of the property that I so just take out the, the broken part. That's great. And then all that litter that's back there, the, the, the other trees that were broken because they were quite big and whatnot, you can clear that up um, except for the one that me and um, Dave identified. That something slipping in. Could possibly live in. Yeah. It's <laughs> Thank you for... Uh, you know, understanding the environmental side of this, uh, yeah. So it's got the it's got the cavity and it's got the woodpecker and, it, and all that. So that would be a great one to leave. But the rest, I, you know, I understand that, it, that it's not really. It's like there there are hangers out there and and it's going to be a danger. So I think me and David thought that that was fine. They agrees with me. So I think the commission's just going to have to take our word for it. So I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make a motion for a negative determination. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I have, again, I've prepared this. It doesn't have everything that we've talked about tonight in it, but if you sign it, I can add that stuff to it. Okay. I'm okay yep. with that. Yep. Okay. The only thing that really has to be added is your donation to the tree fund, right? No. <laughs> yeah, you can make that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go against Cafe. Okay, it's right. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Check, check boxes to that. That's a first remote. <laughs> oh, oh, we can have. Yeah. <laughs> check box. I missed a lot of check boxes. Yeah, that's amazing. We're making progress. Did we sign? You know, it makes you wonder who owned that property and left those dumps. Yeah, we signed the last property. We've done nothing with the property in probably 20 or 30 years. But I, I guess what I'm wondering, so having dealt with many contractors, are interesting to me. That's cool. Some guy had to get rid of the asphalt, went up to home, and the owner and said, well, "Way back here, we'll give you a thousand bucks or something." He said, "Fine." It's, you know, How else would it get there? It's private property, right? Uh, there's work, that could there's be. back there too. It's, glass. it's a condition. Glass, yeah. yeah. I mean that we say you um, need to, yeah, oh, every so. so. Um, we were talking about there's, there's, the, there's a field of glass right here. <coughs> Some of the glass bottles, little yep. tiny, mm -hmm. things that they don't make anymore. Oh, sure. I, I have my conservation property and there was an old greenhouse on the property. Be careful they just what you caved, caved it in and they just yeah. buried it, right? So I'm trying to clear an area because I had young kids at the time. And I'm finding barrels of broken glass under the ground. It was, it was insane. Johnson Woods. There's only one left. No. No, uh, there are two. He's here for well, there's someone else. an email. Chuck passed it out. Yeah, so that's what I passed out this. Uh, oh. Oh. You already made copies? I copies did, yeah. I did. More copies for it. Oh. No, I made copies. I handed it to them, and I told them they may be here. And there you are. When I tell you I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. All right. My turn? Uh, yeah, sure. Just introduce yourself. Uh, I will. My name is Kevin Signetti. I noticed that there are a couple of uh, new faces here, so I'll introduce myself. And where I where I live, I'm at 13 Smith Avenue. Been a resident of 13 Smith Avenue for 45 years since 1973. That being the case, I'm here for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the ZBA project, Lakeview Eaton, Eaton Street, and also I might as well throw in uh, the fact that. Uh, for those folks that have been here for quite a while, they either recognize my name or my face, or a combination of both, or if they look in the file, they'll notice that there's a problem with the tree. Pine tree, when I first moved in, was 12 to 14 feet high. That was 1973. In 1988, approximately, when I put the pool in, in the backyard, it was somewhere between 25 and 30 feet, and the residents at that particular point next door said that they would take it down and we would co-share in the cost. Now I'm looking at a pine tree some 65 to 70 feet tall. I've been back and forth to Conservation Commission on a number of uh, occasions, uh, and because of its proximity to wetlands, um, it's been denied. The last time I was here with the new residents who were amenable to cutting the tree down, uh, all they could get was to cut the branches, some of the branches, and put rods holding some of the branches up. The major limbs are overhanging my property, and when they break, they will go right through not only my addition, but also the main portion of my house. That being said, um, I'm actually here for that reason, but for uh, at this particular job. When did you, um, excuse me, yes. uh, Mr. Signetti, when did you um, 
uh, approach the con con? Most recently, I think it was three years ago, there were new residents of 9 Smith Avenue. Uh, the young ladies that live there presently um, were unable to um, uh, to take the tree down at that point. Oh, so it was on their property, Nine Smith it's Avenue? Three, it's within three feet of my property. Was it which property is Nine the Smith tree? Avenue. Thank you. And I'm at 13. Now, uh, I'm here actually, and I've got the bullet points that I mentioned here to be less, five minutes or less, so I promise you I would not be the case. I'm timing uh, it. <laughs> set your clock. But in any event, uh, the Z, this is the ZBA um, uh, Eaton Lake View project. Um, uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are around, but I wanted to make sure this was logged in. Uh, the uh, meeting, the planning board meeting, which took place on July 17th last week, um, the attorney for the ZBA project uh, was there and had a proposal um, at that particular juncture. One part of the project was going to be tw 25 feet from uh, wetlands, the other part was going to be 50 feet from wetlands. Um, and they, they, he um, uh, said he was, um, he was uh, uh, very in tune with the local residents and as a result they cut down the project from 300 to 200 to 120, uh, 120 and now 86 units. Uh, bottom line is they talked about the fact that they have, I guess, I think I believe it was two, uh, or the, the proposal is for two underground um, plastic storage areas in the event that there's um, uh, a, an, ex an excess of uh, uh, water coming uh, on an overflow from the tributary of the Abajona River, which borders um, Eaton Street in the back of Smith Avenue and also um, Carnation Circle. And it goes all the way up Beaton Street. Um, that's can be shown on the map. Uh, since I've been there 45 years, I've seen uh, the tributary of the Abajona River flood uh, it, on at least three occasions. In fact, when my kids were younger, um, they actually used to shovel off the snow in the back there and skate in the back and play hockey. But in any event, that being said, I have uh, a number of bullet points. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the project. Uh, the proposed environmental impact of building within 25 feet in Project A, 50 feet in Project B. Let us see, the jurisdiction, what is the jurisdiction of Reading, Reading Mass Conservation Commission um, uh, uh, and what do they have to provide the builder when proposing to build in a floodplain area and or wetland area? Um, uh, I understand that this is all part of the um, Safe Harbor Act, and um, Safe Harbor Act in the town of Reading is going to expire next February. And uh, if, in fact, uh, the town does not act on this uh, project, um, the reality is they'll go for the 40B project. Um, the reality is, as well, is if they proposed originally, this is the old Zani, uh, old Zani property of a couple of years ago, uh, if they have knocked it down from 300 to 86, rest assured this 86 is going to build up to 300 at some point in the future. Um, that being said, um, uh, letter D, it says, if the project is, is to be constructed, what provisions will be made by the Conservation Commission reference to fines and or penalties when, what, not if, when flooding and damage occurs to the surrounding properties. Now I understand this was just a proposal at the planning, uh, planning board last um, um, July 17th. I know that, that date well because July 17th, 1968 was my induction day, which was not a good day for me. But in any, it was a day will be down in infamy. But in any event, that being said, could have uh, gone to Canada. I'm sorry. Could have gone to Canada. Uh, I could have, <laughs> I guess. Why was that an option for you? No, that's when I was hanging around. A lot of people thought that was a smart move back then. I didn't think it was. No, no, did I. Uh, I thought it was a very unwise move, and I didn't think it was very patriotic. I agree. So I did my deal. Thank you. Let's sorry. go on. Now, uh, what jurisdiction um, uh, does the local uh, Reading Mass Conservation Commission have in dealing with such uh, matters uh, as Safe Harbor and or 40B? Um, 40B. And finally, if if the ZBA project is allowed to present the ZBA uh, as the ZBA attorney uh, proposed. Why have I been unable to cut the limbs from a 65 to 70 foot pine tree located at 9 Smith Avenue within three feet of my property and when overhanging limbs present a clear and present danger as can be identified in the last letter that I sent, 
uh, to both the Conservation Commission, as well as the Police Department, as well as my insurance company, um, uh, to my person and property. And I'm done. Any, any uh, conversation? Let's go to F first. Sorry? Let's go to F first. Yes. Um, we do allow, uh, I, the tree, I guess, is within a jurisdiction. It's within 100 feet of wetlands, yes. Yeah. But it's on the edge of the wetland. Okay. And but the tree probably just changed last November. I'm sorry? The tree policy was just created last November, so after your last... That's almost like the, that's almost like the no left turn on the end of Green Street. Yeah, so, <laughs> so what, what you were presented with at the last, the last time you came here is not what we have to look at now. So everything you heard tonight and your situation is different now. It's not really your situation, but it's your neighbor's situation. But unlike, you know, these other trees that were in a forest, this is one tree with virtually nothing around it, but it it's exactly what I think the tree policy. Do you recall going out and seeing this? Oh yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've heard about it. I think okay. we had a we had a member of the town who lived on Smith Ave. Um, so I, I got the and full it, rundown. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think you can trim these trees, can't you? So yeah, I didn't get the I didn't get from the owners that lived there at Nine Smith Ave that it was something that they absolutely wanted to do, um, which to take it down. Uh, and I don't know how I came up with that conclusion, but I would assume that it was because what they presented to us was a trimming. They wanted to trim it. They got it. They found someone who would take the sail out of the tree and and tied up and they thought that that would that would work and if, the commission looked might, at that that was not the case they didn't want to take it down because the two young ladies and i were at the meeting that's the first thing secondly was the conservation commission that said you can only trim the tree and put rods uh so what was the reason why did, why did they because of the habitat value or the, something like that what was the reason for taking it down no, to, leave no, it. to leave it to leave it I, for the Conservation Commission? Yeah. Because of the fact that they felt as if it was a healthy tree and, and within the wetlands. So, yeah, so it was a healthy tree. The, 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 our jurisdiction aside, I think you'll find that you have air rights to your property and you have every right to cut overhanging limbs down. That, that I did not. I did not. And the reason why I was told that by the Conservation Commission is because of the fact that those limbs, overhanging, overhanging limbs to my property were cut, it would um, cause a, a, a problem with the tree and the tree would topple. Well, I'm not saying that that's not true, but if, as I said, outside of our jurisdiction, you as a homeowner have a right to protect your property. Overhanging limbs are yours to cut. I, I appreciate that, and I contested that. I was told I didn't. Well, again, I said outside of our jurisdiction. This is in our jurisdiction. It's a little bit different. That, I don't know if that was... So there was a time when Fran was here and there was a time when I was here. He came once with me. And I don't know how many times with Fran, but I don't know if I told you that. Did I tell you that? Uh, with the overhanging limbs? Yeah, you can't cut those? Um, I, I can't tell you whether it was... I know that you were here, mm. but I can't tell you whether... And I think you were pretty moved on that subject. Uh, but in any event, the only thing that was granted to the young ladies were, um, the, was the fact that they could trim up some of the branches and had to have rods installed. Um, and they weren't very happy because it cost them money and it actually didn't do any, it didn't do anything. It didn't prevent the tree from growing, didn't prevent Yeah, why are the, the rods, rods installed? Rods installed yeah, I, to, 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 I guess, to shore up the, uh, yeah, the limbs. So, did, so the, like, the, like, if you have, like, long leaders, the wind will take one and blow it off. This is a pine tree by itself, right. so it, it's a suspect to Which is strong to gusts of wind. Yeah. I mean, we've all been hoping that it. You know, so, would you like to take the tree down? Oh, it's not well, it's not his it's tree. Like <laughs> Boy, well, we'll like give you permission to, to cut the limbs. How's that? No. <laughs> I, you know what? I think we should add this to the uh, Lakeview and Eaton uh, application. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm okay. I was just looking at it myself. <laughs> they like you eating? No. Oh, no, the big no. tree in your backyard. Those are put on Google. Well, yeah, it's big. It's a big, it's a big tree. Big. Uh, and I hate pine and trees. It's a pine so tree you, you right get no, on the edge of the wetland. Which you'll is, never get a hard time from me for cutting out a pine tree. I, I just they are the dirtiest trees in the world. All right. But just saying. Yeah. Okay. Right, anything else <laughs> no. on this? On so, these? so I want to make you guys aware of the ZBA project because. Okay. Wait. Before. I'm sorry. Let's. So they could come back. 
like what would be hit their options on the trade then? I don't know. I mean, I think I think this is one that everyone has to see, and I think okay. you know, I mean, I, the the tree policy speaks for itself. I mean, this is a tree that has been saved by many a commission for the habitat value, the proximity to the wetland, all that. But we have a new tree policy, right. and maybe it deserves a second third chance. look. Second look. Third. Oh. Fourth. 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 All right, let's move on. So uh, what you're saying is then I should consult with the neighbors and come back and schedule a meeting in reference to uh, taking the tree down. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think so. I think that uh, I'm not sure of the outcome. But it's, like I said, we have a new policy. It's one tree. It fits under the policy. Uh, I would I would have brought this to the commission And, and you see we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of tree projects coming, coming through. I mean, we have three today. tonight. Yeah. And are you folks aware of the proposal for the ZBA project in terms of the um, uh, uh, building within 50 feet of wetlands and also within 25 feet on the other pro project B within 25 feet of wetlands. We, ha have, we, have we, a, we don't have an application in front of us. We haven't got anything. A, so a, yeah, no, this is only a proposal by the attorney for ZBA. They uh, haven't I know, but, we, but before we get to, to do anything mm -hmm. with it, we have to have a notice of intent. So a, a permit filed with us showing okay, you right, know sure. the location of the the buildings within um, you know our jurisdiction you know the hundred foot buffer zone sure. um, the riverfront area and also the floodplain so, so Becky the, the only thing I would add and, and I'm very familiar with this project I've actually been part of a neighborhood group working with the developer to try to alleviate some of the, the neighborhood's concerns separate from the, this project just in general for a 40B project, the way it works is they go only to the ZBA to get approval for any town bylaws that they don't plan on meeting. They still have to come to Conservation Commission with a proposal and a notice of intent, but the Conservation Commission's uh, jurisdiction at that point has nothing to do with reading bylaws. It, it only covers they, they'll file a, a notice of intent of the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts, and they and they basically they're going to over overcome the presumptions and drive that project closer than we would normally allow under our bylaw. Is, so, is it going to be a 40B? It it is. But I would tell you I've seen many a uh, many a uh, iteration of the plans, and it's. It's, what is it? How far away is it? Within 25 so, feet on one side, within 50 feet on another. So I think so they like are 50 to 25 feet. I think they are actually keeping outside of the 35 foot, foot no structure zone for everything, as far as I've seen. Um, so the one thing to remember under our bylaws, this is riverfront property. Under state bylaws, it is not. So uh, that is something uh, that's, that's right. Really, that's right. This this came before us as an ANRAD. So a, a wetland delineation a, a has already been. So hold on, on, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You gotta stop. Yeah. Okay. No, you gotta it's... stop. That you can't. You can't do that. So we should we should move. On. Mike is gonna recuse himself. He's part of a neighborhood group, and he can't talk to you guys. <laughs> You know, as one person, and have you complete? It has to be at a public meeting with other people. So we just went way beyond what should happen. I agree. I'm glad Chuck stopped me because I so pointed should, that out to him before. So, in my opinion, you should be aware that this is ongoing. Okay. Uh, and it should be so noted. So, um, Chuck, as, well, again, with 40 Bs in general, it's any departments, co commission, conservation commission, whoever they're wherever there is a, a regulation that they go to the ZBA, not the constant, like it's not going to be settled at He has to get a wetlands, they have to get a wetland permit right. under the state mm -hmm. and then the ZBA will do the rest. Yes. Usually what happens, and, and this, this always happens, is every board will go to the ZBA and tell them what they want. So we can try, well they can, the ZBA, can try to get the best deal they can, I have to say it that way, yeah. knowing what each uh, board or commission wants, but they, they're they running the board. It's up to them. It's up to the ZBA. It's up to the developer's board. Yeah. 
the state. zoning zoning, zoning board, board of appeals. Appeal. Because, because of the ZBA board. Yeah, because of the state. So, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna be in control of our Wellness Protection Act and what happens there. But as far as the bylaw, um, you know, like the tree policy and the twenty five foot and no the twenty five foot zone of natural vegetation and the thirty five foot no right. structure zone, those don't apply. And but they, they only apply because if we if if you know we have to tell the ZBA that we really feel strongly that you know whatever. And that's because it's anything that we're doing is supplanted by state requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, but can't, what makes this as far as this goes, you, you can't build a fence inside. Since the we don't have a final plan in front of us, it doesn't make any sense to really get into the weeds okay, about any of this. Yeah. Okay. Get fine. into the weeds, if so, you will. That's fine. So it's no, That's the yeah. important thing. Yeah. So right. just so you're informed, they will have to say. But what you've kind of heard here is they are going to have to submit a notice of intent application. Right. And there will be public meetings here. For that project, right. I know. I know the, the planning board's next meeting is September fifth. Wednesday, September fifth. Yeah, but the and, and, and I understand there'll be more conversation and so forth and so on. Yeah. But having seen so many things that I've seen in this town for forty-five years, and having seen as an example, perfect example, what's going on, what went on at Walkersburg Drive with the um, uh, Home Depot and and. Um, Jordan's furniture and so forth and so on. We were never apprised of the fact that they were going to cap it and build from up above. We thought it was going to be from ground level, uh, but it was after the fact that you know they they did some modification in terms of lighting and all the rest of that stuff, but not much. Uh, but in any event, I'm trying to be proactive as opposed to reactive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Don't thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Chuck is more amenable this time than uh, a couple of years ago. Well, I already invited you to join the commission. They know I like you. <laughs> <laughs> there would be no commission if I joined. <laughs> Just uh, an, an anecdotal uh, situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I know you guys are leaving. Oh, my, uh, uh, my, my first duty uh, station. He's, uh, he's got I, uh, that. I want oh. to come in. My oh, got I get it. And my uh, division officer came down and he was talking to me. He said, you know what? He said, you should join a Bible study. We have some uh, weekend. And I said, yeah. you don't want to. Uh, we're not, we're not said, going yet, guys. Oh, no, we do. still have more business. Do you? Do you? You yeah, have we do. There you go. All right. <laughs> we do. That's yeah. it. Thank you. All right. Do you want more copies? You have copies. I, we have everyone has a copy. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and I'm sorry to keep you over time. Well, we have more. We have more. We have more. Oh, oh, oh. We have more. We got oh. more. Well, I'm yesterday's news. Um, I guess you heard nothing from Redding Woods. Yeah, I, that's good. I'm glad because we wanted Redding Woods. Redding Woods is uh, Augusta Court. No, I did hear from Mike. Well, Redding Woods, Johnson Woods. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Running out of woods to call things, but um. <laughs> You mean we come to the wood end? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, oh. so I did oh, talk to the wait. engineer and he is going to talk to Northeast New England Environmental to come up and evaluate some of the some of the plants. So we're talking about Augusta Court, Reading Woods. Right? Right. For the certificate of compliance. Where right. there's a list of things that have to get done. Right. So I talked to the engineer and he called up Northeast New England Environmental to come up and evaluate the plants and he's going to get back to me when that's I thought it was pretty simple. Cut out the woody vegetation in the retention area, right? Yeah. And there was a funky bound at the end of, I think... Wetland 7. Yeah, 7. It went off this way and the wetland really went this way. Mm. And they can trim along that. Well, that's wow. that's that's a question from an abutter. That's a question from someone who lives okay. there. All right. So the bound that was kind of off in no man's land. So it looks like from the order of conditions that along the back of the building, and they, they had to be there. That was pretty much a straight line, ten feet off the building. That's to maintain the building. The rest needs to be untouched. And then after that, they it. It seemed to go into, they call the entire 100 foot the no touch zone. And that's why the bounds are further out around there. So when I was talking to Mike a 
his name is Mike Rosati, um, he said that, you know, three more bounds he doesn't have a problem with. So they will add some more. Is it going to be on the 25-foot line or like the order of condition says on the 100-foot line? I would just go with what the order says because we're not like rewriting history Fine. at this point. Sure. Okay. So it looks like that's that's all we needed to do. So the one that's <laughs> the one that's around that corner, it, it can't be. It's not on the twenty-five, and it can't be on the hundred because it's only. You mean over by the big tree? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have him check. But I've been getting. You know, I've asked him to do things, and it's a big project. It's multi homes, and he's been just. No, no, I can't. I can't. You know, why do you want this? And, yeah. and I wouldn't expect to get that. I mean, for for regular guys that are just building a house on their own, I've gotten less pushback. So um, we'll have to go through this. And you know, we're not submitting the, or we're not signing the certificate of compliance. But you know, I'll ask them to verify that that's either on the hundred. It's not on the twenty-five foot line, but and we'll see what goes from there. Okay. Um, John we did Brenner already, we did Johnson Woods. Um, well, Johnson Woods, um, we haven't got anything. Anika has made contact with somebody and... Um, it was the, uh, I, I don't know if it was chair, but at least a member of the... Right. Of the uh, and we'll wait activity. until the next meeting right. when Anika's back. Hopefully we'll get that individual in and uh, talk about that. And then we have Administrator's Report, uh, Regulation Mitigation, Q&A, Act and Bylaw. Mm -hmm. What's this? We got an email from Dave asking us to, you know, kind of, I don't know, go, th go through some of the, you know, what we do as a commission and, and what we're talking about as, from mitigation and, and where does it pop up in the uh, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act regulations and also uh, <coughs> Reading General Bylaws for the wetlands. We did. And? Is oh, that all we get? <laughs> is that the question but there's no answer? Well, it seemed like Dave is just having a hard time finding where it is in the, in the bylaw, but I think, I don't know, maybe Dave should tell us instead of us guessing to like interpret his email maybe Dave can let us know exactly what he was asking so we can we can answer the questions so that's where I want to start relative to what I wrote to both Becky and Chuck and and you all received a copy of it um, it's something that uh, I think in the letter that I sent it was something that I've heard come up several times in uh, the course of the meetings for the Reading Wetlands what the Reading Conservation Commission about mitigation and uh, from uh, what I've, I come from, a, a not only an educational but a construction background, and um, I've dealt with mitigation in the past. And mitigation that I have understood has always been when you abridge or you damage in some way, um, or you have to maybe cross over a wetland area, that you have to replicate that area as mitigation. So that was what my understanding of, uh, of mitigation had been. And it's something that I searched for before and, and I didn't find it. And what I did is I went through the, the town of Reading bylaws and I went through the, the common Massachusetts regulations and the, and the uh, 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 other laws and did specifically a search for mitigation. And the unfortunate thing is, is that in all of the, the searches that I did of all of those documents, for the word mitigation. The only explanation of what mitigation was is that it's very clearly stated that mitigation means rectifying an adverse impact by repairing, rehabilitating, or restoring the affected resource area or compensating for an adverse impact by enhancing or providing replacement resource area. So one of the things that I said in my letter was that um, in, in my short tenure in the Reading Conservation Commission, I have observed mitigation to be often mentioned term, to which I have in many cases not been able to determine where the adverse impact and or the requirement for repairing, rehabilitating, or restoring is applicable. And we very clearly had, an, it, it had a, a conversation during our meeting the last time that we met 
uh, regarding mitigation on the uh, project that occurred at the uh, off of Arcadia Ave, which we talked about earlier, uh, Zero Low Meadow. And um, uh, what I asked about um, that the mitigation for that project was the donation of the uh, conservation restriction for that particular piece of property. And it, it was my thought at that time is, how can you actually force a give as mitigation? And where is the damage that was being done to the wetland area at that point? Because that person is not entering into the wetland area. So where is the replacement, the repair, et cetera, coming up to demand that mitigation? And one of the things that Chuck very clearly said is that uh, we have an order of conditions that we approved a project based on a slate of conditions. That was one of them, meaning the, the, the conservation restriction. If that didn't exist in that slate of conditions, we wouldn't have approved the project. So they can't take it away. They have to give it to us, and it's important. If I had to hold up the building permit, it would. That project doesn't go forward unless we get the CR. So now that really get the wheels turning as to how is that mitigation? So where does can, that come in? Can I take a stab at this? No, no. Sure, what I, I want, I, what I, I want to. I need about ten minutes when we're done. <laughs> That's fine. I get, I get ten minutes. That's fine. At some point. So, so, so what it is is that it's. It was also stated that. Uh, with the Riverfront Act, you need to do mitigation for the work or the disturbance in the Riverfront area. That his mitigation, and I understand that the order of conditions states that, that that person was going to give this conservation restriction and that was agreed to. And I get that. I just don't know how you can actually hold up a person's building permit predicated on something that's being donated to the town as a give. Or that you can demand that that person give a conservation restriction to the town as mitigation to be able to go forward with the project. Now, that to me just doesn't, it doesn't seem right. And when I look in the laws and I look at what mitigation is, Mitigation is very clearly what I just wrote, read to you of what it says in the regulations. And there is mitigation mentioned, but it's a mitigation as a word. Um, and it all, most of it has to do with repairing, replicating, and redoing damage or something that was done in a wetland resource area. So that's why I asked that question because there wasn't any any work that was being done in the wetland area at that point or in the riverfront area so I, I don't get that that in order for that project to use Chuck's words if we didn't get that CR that project doesn't go forward Dave can I ask so, you, do you where's the riverfront area the riverfront area extends in a parallel line 200 feet uh, away from the uh, mean high watermark. Okay, uh, there, are two, there are two sections to the riverfront the area. There's the first 100 feet, which right. is the inner, inner right riparian right and the outer zone. riparian zone. And then the, from 100 to 200 right. is the outer riparian I, zone. I, I, and uh, so the development was right. within that first 100 feet. Right, it is. So that's the inner riparian zone. Okay. Right. So, so any project, to, so my perspective is that any project that comes before us as a notice of intent is coming before us because they have the ability to impact the wetland. It, it's not just because there's... No, there's more to it with the inner riparian zone um, and certain things that in that inner riparian zone on that piece of property was not developed. Right. And even though it's not wetland, it does have habitat, sure. and that is that is the whole thing with the inner riparian zone mm -hmm. is that you're supposed to keep that as it is. 
Otherwise, one of the things you could do for mitigation is, okay, you're going to take those that 100 feet. Now you got to replicate that someplace in that area or improve the wetland area, but you've got to carve it up. There was no other place to carve that particular. Correct. And, and Chuck, do you have the... Um, can you add to that? You yeah. have the regular... I think Mike wanted to talk. Well, no, I think that's that's kind of consistent with what I was going to say is, is, you know, in this case, it had to do with the riverfront area. And right. while we're talking about when we say mitigation, because they had no place to replicate, because they had no place to work for this project to provide some and sort of mitigation, some sort of mm. betterment oh. to the resource area, the, what I viewed as a, a betterment to the resource area was a conservation restriction on the remainder of the property right. that would help protect this this resource area. So right. that's why, you know, uh, what Becky said is exactly why it qualified to get mitigation and the reason the conservation restriction is an appropriate mitigation because any other mitigation measure was, measure was not necessarily feasible. There's also another part of the Riverfront Act uh, uh, Part of the the uh, the law that says that it, it what this law, law are you talking about the um, mass general law mass general law okay. yeah 131 that says a lot that exists before 1996 um, kind of escapes a lot of those requirements uh, for the building of a single family single family home uh, on a lot that is in that area so. You know, it, again, it's, you know, it's, I was looking for some something that says black and white, you know, yes, if you're building within, you know, 100 foot of that, you can request a mitigation for a building within that area. And that really, it's, it's when I talk to people that were in the, the, uh, in the mass DEP, you know, they said, let the regulations be your guide. So I'm looking for where it says in the regulation that you can actually do this. But it's not just this project. And, and I want to make that very clear. It's been other mentions of mitigation that have been asked of applicants that have come in here in the past that have, aren't in a riverfront area. They're within, uh, uh, they're in the buffer zone, the 100-foot buffer zone. And there's been asks for mitigation where they're not in the wetland, so I just, so it, it's not just this particular project, it's mitigation as has been mentioned a number of times in the past. And particularly in this, one of the things that bothered me about this, and, and it was something that, that I think I would have heard the, the, uh, the needle scratch on the record. Had uh, had I read in 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 order conditions that the building permit would would be held until the CR was actually written and filed. One of the reasons for that is let's just say for instance that someone miraculously got this through. They applied for this per, per project in December. We went out and did the wetlands delineation. They get everything bang bang bang. It was done and. Uh, um, on even on this particular project and we got it through and it got through in May and I didn't know what it took to do a conservation restriction but you know from what Chuck said it takes six months so now what you're going to do is you're going to hold up this guy's building permit perhaps for that first year for the, the the very verdant period of that person being able to build in that year because they're going to give the town four acres of land but it's not filed yet with with the state that sounds like a very separate question yeah it's not no, that's, that's it's, a very separate question because the applicant could, didn't one question sit there saying, and say this is the right to do it and then the second question is you just don't agree yeah th that's, well, that's, i that's didn't agree with that part with the no. process well the that second piece is the applicant process. has the the right to say this is an undue burden to mm -hmm. me right. which they did not I they, get that. they no, realized no, I get that. that that this is the mitigation that they could uh, achieve and so they agreed to it uh, and, and so uh, I guess th I agree that that second piece is a very different part of this. Do you, do, you th do you think that project would have gone forward with 
without this mitigation. I mean, we had the entire neighborhood here. I mean, it was a virgin lot that the first 100 foot was clear cut, was going to be cut, mm -hmm. you know, to put a house on it. I mean, it, it, it seems to me that, you know, you need to have mitigations within the size and scope of the project. And this is within the size of the scope of that project. That might be one of the only, on, you know, forested lots left in, in Reading that's in the riverfront. Mm -hmm. And you did say that it's outside the riverfront. So actually, the, the project is within the first 100 foot. No, no, I get that. Of, no, what I'm saying is that they're not working in past the, the BBW. So, that's, but, but, you know, that's see, right. a lot of what you're saying is kind of what, what I did way back when I first started reading the regulations, mm -hmm. because the regulations aren't going to answer every question. You're not going to be able to search things and find terms and it says this is what you do. It's, it's, it's to take the whole thing together. But I have highlighted a couple of spots that was simple and easy to find. But I will tell you that even Rebecca couldn't find them. But, but <laughs> I need it. But, I need a, I But need I want a, you to know I that a, I've done this a paper for copy. a lot longer than you have. And I've done it for, you know, Arlington Riverfront. Mm -hmm. It's all yeah, there. Yeah. You know, here, yeah, Riverfront. So it's easy. So I know the spots. So when you're saying things, I know from past projects. I learned a lot through past projects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're supposed to read the Wetlands Protection Act and the town's wetland protection bylaw and regulations at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Hard to do, but some people actually do that. I, I can't tell you how you do that. Anyways, this is the 100 foot. This was undisturbed. Right. The riverfront is back in there. So undisturbed, trees, riverfront. So I just wanted to establish that. You, you know what project. I think is a little kind of, it obfuscates what I thought I, I would, if I had to write down what I thought the definition of mitigation was, it wouldn't be tied to terms and conditions of something that had nothing to do with, you know, uh, recuperating a property or something like that nature. It wouldn't have to do with actual physical you know, we're going to take this chunk of wetland, so we're going to create a new chunk of wetland over there, so everything is even. And I think of mitigation, I think of undoing damage or, or compensating or repairing for damages. But the other thing, too, is when you talk about the need for a conservation restriction, you would almost think by definition, by, by virtue of the proximity of the land to a riverfront, that you wouldn't need an additional conservation restriction on something. It should already be assumed or it, it, I mean it's already under some some regulation anyway I mean I would well it is. Uh, so what does the conservation restriction do on top of the fact that it's already riverfront yeah well it's just like that property there is you know that even though it's within the 100 foot that people find a way and and Al Couillard always said you know that when when you when there was no when there was plenty of space people just stayed away because it wasn't worth the money to do it, but nowadays it's you can spend the money and you can still recoup that money to to get it back. People will find a way when when it's that close. So well, there, there, there are, are regulations to, to help home, protect so that yeah. area, but absolutely. Well, look at the back bay in Boston, yeah. which is sinking. Mm. Well, it should still. be. It's all tide lines. Yeah. So some, somehow <laughs> everything ultimately gets built on, as you can see from Boston. But there is a you know. There is a concerted effort to s slow it down, stop it, preserve certain spots. Would Low Meadow or 113 Arcadia Ave, does it need a conservation restriction? It needs a conservation restriction to allow the public to use it, public access. Um, so is that, that, it was that on top of the, the it, conservation? But it was wet, so you really couldn't build there. There was no right. other buildable spot unless two or three houses could be fit on. Oh, I don't have it up anymore. I have it have it fit on what was up and dry and buildable. Mm -hmm. So we don't know that because they presented one house because in the in under the regulations 
one house is allowed with a driveway that's appropriate size and you know with the land leaving just enough land around it to maintain it so all that is kind of what they presented to us and it was hard to hard to deny um, but I mean I don't think they could build on that land but it was great for them to offer it to us I don't know I don't remember exactly how that happened if we offered if we asked for it if they offered it to us but it seemed great and they also they also agreed to have this ready before they had a building permit you know before we put this in we're gonna we're gonna take care of this and and I don't know what happened but but that isn't the case but all you can do is work with people you know when when things come up I mean it, I, I don't believe in you know it's it sounded great at the meeting but it's not very practical and these guys are having a hard time so that's why you seven have to figure out what you want to do because at the end of the day when you don't get your conservation restriction and you got to talk to those abutters because that's what they bought into you're the ones that are going to be explaining it so that's why I wanted to make sure that we're getting this thing so, I, so I, well, because the abutters wanted the restriction to have access to the property, because that was so that was all. No, the abutters thought. Well, I didn't specifically talk to one abutter about the conservation restriction. I mean, one of them asked me if a trail was going to go in back of all those houses, and I told him basically, I think it's going to be open space, and no one's, you know, there's not any talk about any trails. But for them, what it meant was it's unbuildable. Now sure. the rest of the land, what they wanted for all of the land. The rest of the land is unbuildable. So for that, maybe they got a little piece. Hey, what is that a picture of? That is a picture of a construction site with erosion control and water and and uh, it's not. I don't even know if it's here in town. It was part of part of my stuff. So I, I put together something to um, to help out maybe with Dave and anyone else that doesn't understand mitigation and where it comes from in the Wellness Protection Act or in the Reading Wellness Protection Bylaw. So, um, I have a, Whoa. Uh, yeah, Whoa. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait for what other guy. No, that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we excited. could do that again. I can give this to you maybe when I'm the, done. Maybe at the but, end. But that's going to do it. Right. So, before I start, I just want to tell you that although I did copy and paste a lot of these these things in there, I didn't copy and paste everything because it doesn't fit on these pages. But I have reference material at the end, and you guys can get it from me or the PowerPoint and look this stuff up yourself. But um, it's basically copy and pasted. I didn't change any words uh, to benefit anyone, especially Rebecca. So. Um, in the procedures of the order of conditions, um, we were asked to do a couple of things. Um, and one of those things is to impose uh, necessary, necessary restrictions to meet the performance standards. We're also asked to review the uh, stormwater area and make sure that that's, that's working. And when you see those numbers like six, K through H, you need to go right to those, figure those out, and then read the next, read the next thing. Uh, for work in the resource area, a buffer is what we're what we're looking at, and in 10 CMR 10.51 and 10 through 10.60 is the inland, inland wetlands. 10.21 through 10.51 is open water. Ocean. Ocean, ocean resources. You ocean better resource be glad area. you aren't on mm. the coast because well, so you would know. Open water and inland water, basically. That's right. So we're doing inland wetlands, streams, right. wetlands, uh, isolated wetlands, you know. Tidal river flooded. is considered open water. It would not. It doesn't come in. I don't think. Uh, well, maybe some like in Peabody. Is. They have maybe some tidal stuff. Danvers River up in Danvers yeah. is open water. It's tidal because you can navigate to the ocean on it. Uh, it, it. Oops. I think it falls into the ocean. Probably, but there's all all, all like dunes, lands subject to coastal storm flowage, shellfish beds. It goes on and on. Oh, I'm and sure it does. And yeah. bank and dune is very difficult. 
and you actually need to consult with CZM on that. So once it's established that the commission has jurisdiction, and that's what we just did through that RDA, that we have jurisdiction, but we chose not to ask for a notice of intent or it wouldn't cause any harm, but we have jurisdiction. So meaning it's in the 200 foot or the 100 foot buffer, but they're working in the resource area. So we have jurisdiction. So everything applies now. So it doesn't apply if they're outside of that area. Um, so we, uh, so once the unit established jurisdiction, uh, we shall impose, we shall impose conditions to contribute to protection of the interests of the act. And you all know the interests of the act, I'm sure. So that's what we're all about, protection of uh, shellfish, water, habitat, things like that. There, eight, there is eight of those. I have those on this iPad. I don't have them in this presentation. So the conditions may include limits on the size and location and scope of the projects and restoration of the natural vegetated area adjacent to the resource area. These things are allowed. So you can think of all the times that we've asked for that. Mm -hmm. And why are we asking for that? Because it's, it's on the table. We have a quiver of arrows, quiver of arrows, and we're able to choose whatever we want to make the project work. So our goal is to um, protect the interests of the act, even if our protection is in the buffer zone. So that's the riverfronts, but when the buffer zone is developed, we can consider the extent of the development where, um, where the extent is extensive, we can consider restoration adjacent to the resource area. That's kind of what I just said. Mm. So a lot of times we've asked for this pile of yard waste to be taken out. There's an example. All of what I just said was wetland. Now we're getting into riverfront. So I've accomplished, I, what I've shown you is that we can ask for mitigation under the wetland. We can protect areas, or we can talk about areas in the buffer zone that will contribute to the protection of the interests of the act that are in the resource area. So if we see problems in the buffer zone, we can look in, we can, we can identify those and do something about it if we think that it will protect the interests of the act in the resource area. So, and that gets to one of the biggest things is that each one of you, and that's why Dave, you can't find the answers to anything because you have to draw a conclusion based on what's presented to you because one of the big things I always say is everything is rebuttable um, with credible evidence. So everyone makes their own decision. That's why there's seven of us here. There's not eight. There's not six. We need a, you know, we need a, a odd number. So in the Riverfront Protection Act, one of the things I say, and I don't talk directly always from the regulations. One of the main goals of the Riverfront is there can be no significant adverse impact. That's that's goal number one. Not, not to split hairs, but when you say significant and adverse, they're both kind of nebulous terms. What's significant? I mean, there's got to be a definition somewhere. I'm sure it's buried somewhere in the codicils and the nooks and crannies. No, that's no, just definitions buried in your head. Yeah. As a commission member, so, you, you so, have to make sure. So that's where the arbitrary and somewhat capricious decisions we make can be. That's why Dave can't understand why yes. I'm protecting the tree and he wants to take it down. Or no, no, I, I understand that, but, but it's, it, all, it, it's, yeah. it's I, I would never have, I would have thought that there would have been more constraint yeah. right. on interpretation. You need to look at, I would encourage everybody to read and take it a little bit at a time. But look I've at, tried, I gotta tell you what, it's dry. Look at, yeah, I know, but look at the performance standards for each of the resource areas. Why are those resource areas important? Boom. They provide flood protection. They provide water pollution control. They, they provide habitat. They don't, 
you know, those things. And, and if there's something outside of the exact resource area, but it could affect that wetland's ability to, prov to provide that, then you look at that. You know, that's why we look at stormwater rigs you know, for the flood. Right, so flooding. the contractor's here to represent his project. Sure. The homeowner's here to represent his project. We have been sworn in by the town clerk to represent the Wetlands Protection Act and protect the eight interests of the act. That's, that's what we're doing, and obviously this is a great group that we have here. I mean, I actually think that a lot of the stuff that happens here works out perfectly, and I, I it, it was a different group when I first got here, but this is a great group. So to continue, no significant adverse impact. That's your decision based on the size and scope of the project. And how effectively I can convince the rest of you exactly. to agree with me. Exactly, Absolutely. and usually how you do that yeah. so is you read through the regulations. So we all just compromise and do things my way, we can get out of here earlier. Right. You read through the regulations and you bring up points because most of your colleagues don't do that. And they'll say, look, 1057, blah, 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 whatever, it says you can do this. And they'll say, wow, that's, I didn't know you could do that. And then that's how that goes. So um, this essentially says you can't touch what's there and you may have to extend it. So thinking back about Low Meadow, is you can't touch that undisturbed forest that's there. And as a matter of fact, you may have to extend it. This is riverfront. It says it right there mm -hmm. in, in 4D. So that's, but, that's I mean, what they're saying. So wait, wait a minute. minute. There's, and this is, why you can't, this is why you can't word search stuff. Because yep. it's going to take me three bullet points or three, three turns of this thing to get to where I want to go. Okay. All right? So you can't touch what's there, and you may need to extend it. All right. So we're all we all need to think about: Can you move your project back? Can you reduce the size? And can you lessen the impact? Those are the three kind of like the cardinal things that we're supposed to be doing here. So and so that applies to that, or extend, or extend it right there um, to the maximum extent feasible. So what can you do? And this isn't redevelopment, so you have to do it to the maximum mm -hmm. extent. Um, and you also have to, with redevelopment, you have to meet all the other performance standards. So if it's if it's riverfront and wetlands or BBW or isolated, uh, well, you know, isolated wetland or something like that, you have to meet all those standards too. The next is. Um, you have to leave an approximate 100 foot area, 100 foot wide corridor, and if you can't do that, replication or compensatory storage to meet the resource area performance standards are allowed within this area. So, actually, I, I skipped this thought. Um, this just says you only need to maintain that 100 foot wide corridor so it's for the length of the property and then it's 100 foot wide um, and then but if they have to put in storm water to meet the storm water standards or they have to do some sort of outfall or something like that then you can get into that area and you're allowed to do that so it, it allows these structures to to be built um, so now now we're talking about redevelopment and redevelopment is um, can we go back to 10584 before you go on because there's a there's a, a, a part of 10584 that actually um, that actually um, allows for the alteration of 5,000 feet or 10 percent of the lot whichever yeah, yeah. So, is greater. So Dave we're not we're, we can't get down into the weeds I mean you need to do your own research you're right 5,000 square feet the way that works is you can disturb and redevelopment's different. You, the commission, and it's not by right, right. but it's, so the commission sometimes say no to everything. Right. So the way the Wetlands Protection Act is written is to say, look, I'm allowed to disturb 5,000 square feet. You're right. supposed to give that to me. And they say, well, it's not, it's not by right. Right. So how, how, why should I let you disturb all this area right up against the river? And he'll say, well, I'll move it back. I'll give you that first 100 feet, you know, whatever. So, so if it's not by right, it's by privilege or by making a deal or? 
No, it, 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 the, the no they're is saying that in an undisturbed area, that's riverfront, pristine forest, that you can look through these regulations and allow a disturbance of up to 5,000 square feet. You don't have to do it, though. Yeah, it says you, it, the commission may allow. No, we deliberate. Yeah. But the other thing is, is that the, the, uh, the storage and the other stuff that, that was there, and for this lot, we actually had them, uh, they gave an infiltration chamber for all of the, the uh, impervious areas for the, uh, the house where that was recharging the, the water that was off the roof. And also they were planting all the uh, replacement arborvitaes and trees that for the, the to compensate, as well as other ones that were in the, the front of the, uh, the, the lot. And when I looked at this and looked at what they were doing, that's what I considered their mitigation. Well, and I, and, I would and I would just answer that by saying, you know, you're one of seven, and right. that was enough for you, but it wasn't enough for everyone. And I think they came in, I, I, mean, I, think I, that, no, give, I think it I was think an they offer. came in, they said, well, we want to give you a, a, a CR for the rest of right. the land. I mean, it benefits them, too. Right. It, it, it did. It benefited right. them because the commission wanted to work with them, right. and that's not what it takes. But as we, it, as we move forward, you'll see why that's part of the Riverfront Act, that something like that has to happen. When I looked at that project, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was doable because it was within that 100, 100 feet. 100 feet, yeah. Yeah. So Other than it says here that it may, and then it's also at the lots there before uh, 1997 that um, it, it kind of says will allow for a, a single family house with a, a, a sewer and a driveway and a septic system if, if, if a sewer is not available. So in the first 100 feet, so at a minimum, uh -huh, this, is, this is the riverfront without right. redevelopment because that's that, that site. Right. So no adverse impact. Well, you have a house and you have a driveway. That's an adverse this impact. Is, this is four again. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. This is uh, this is riverfront without redevelopment, and we're talking about mm -hmm. 113. Um, so no significant impact. We have the house. We don't have the 100 foot uh, wide undisturbed vegetated uh, buffer. If there's not a 100 foot wide undisturbed vegetated buffer, then you have to. Uh, These are the ones you already did. Yeah, you have to preserve. You have to preserve as much as you can. Extend right. or preserve. So again, that wouldn't apply because they're actually cutting into it. And the maximum extent feasible to approximate a 100 foot wide corridor of vegetation. Right. So. That one right there is what combines with what you said. Right. So to the maximum extent feasible, understanding somewhere else in the regu regulations that says you cannot deny somebody in the riverfront for a house, a small house, a driveway, a septic system, and, and an area around the house to maintain it. So that's to the maximum extent right. feasible. So that's where we were. Yeah, given the, given the, the restrictions of the the lot. Yeah, and then this next one is if they have to do uh, uh, storm water, they can do it right. inside that hundred foot, or they yeah. can take down trees, whatever they have to do yep. to meet the storm water standards. And so, and, re and redevelopment. Hmm. Which that's totally different. So, in uh, redevelopment yeah. is totally different. So, the standard is there's a lot of different standards, but basically, it's. Basically, is we want an improvement. Right. We have a crappy lot. I mean, you're supposed to be thinking of like parking lots and mm -hmm. junkyards, but really, a developed house with a yard is a redevelopment project too. So that's that's and it's, you know so in redevelopment, and this is part of you know ten five eight five. It says right there, redevelopment previously developed riverfront areas, housing mm -hmm. yard. We're talking about restoration and mitigation. So that's what it's that's what it's based on. They want you to do your project. They don't want the commission to not allow you to do the project, but they're telling you up front that you need to propose restoration or mitigation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
The, uh, the work shall improve existing conditions. You can't go any closer with new work. You have to stay 100 feet away. And if you're in, if your already existing building is within the 25 foot buffer zone from the edge of bank because it's riverfront, mm -hmm. you can't go any closer unless you comply with F or G. Mm -hmm. Next slide. The proposed work is outside the riverfront area. They want you to put your work outside of the riverfront, so further than 200 feet away, or as close to the edge of that 200 foot line as possible. So they're saying the commission can move the project and should if it's feasible. Right. If it makes sense, that's why when someone comes in and says, hey, look, I got a pool, and I put a pool in, yeah, we allow pools all the time, but why are you putting it so close to the well end, you know? Can you move it up towards the house? That's exactly what we're doing. This is riverfront, though, so it would have to be a river. Um, you can't, uh, so the proposed work is outside the riverfront area or toward the riverfront boundary. Again, unless F or G. So, and then the last one is you can't exceed the amount of degraded A area over 10%, and that gets into the 5,000 square right. feet. So you have this 10% or 5,000 square feet, whichever is lower, larger that you that you can degrade. Most commissions allow that, you know. But if you had like a parking lot, like the whole entire lot is is paved and there's a house on, they, they can redevelop the whole thing. Right. And but remember, there's one thing about this: at a minimum, you necessarily have to do an improvement. So that parking lot that is parking lot out to the edges, there's got to be a garden in it somewhere. There's right. got to be a tree. There's got to be some improvement. Green but space. that improvement doesn't have to be vegetation. It can be infiltration. Uh -huh. So an improvement. Um, so what's so so everything in Riverfront has to do with you can't you can't you can't unless F or G. So what you know what's F or G? F and G is restoration and mitigation. So right. you can do this stuff if you do some restoring right. of a disturbed area. So that parking lot, you can cut out a spot you don't need because Walmart thought they'd pave the whole place. But you're like, I don't need all this. And they, make, they turn something into a rain garden. Sure. So rest, they're going to restore some something or mitigation. And this is where it is, right here. And, and that's, oh, that's redevelopment. The thing that we were talking about on the other place was that was new build they on Acadia. I get it, but it's you know I I like I said okay. my my understanding no of no significant adverse impact. Well, what was the significant adverse impact of the of the house being built on Acadia? Just just identify that. He was building within the 100 foot. And, right. Now there is no there. There is not a hundred foot wide disturbed area. Oh, at a minimum, there must be a hundred foot wide. These, so Dave, these aren't like oh, pick pick the one you like. This is these are like steps in a ladder or gates. You got to go through one gate to get to the next gate. First gate, no significant adverse impact. The second gate, as a minimum, you, there has to be a hundred. You can't go. All right, we almost did that. No, if you can't get through that gate something has to happen no I, I disagree with you because no. there is there is part of the the riverfront act that actually says Dave you're one you, guy you can't, and you can go it needs to go to the state and you can talk to their right. lawyers because I've actually done that yeah and they just say read the regulations because you know it, it doesn't work that way um, the one so that if you says can't do the 100 foot wide all right go ahead I was just saying that the uh, uh, I lost where it was. Where it says that if you can't if you can't meet the hundred foot, um, that you have to keep as much of the the.
If there is not a 100 foot wide area of un undisturbed vegetation within the riverfront area, existing vegetative cover shall be preserved or extended to the maximum extent feasible to approximately a 100 foot wide corridor of natural vegetation. It doesn't apply to 113 Arcadia. No? No, because there was, if there's not a 100 foot wide, right. there was. They don't get to work there because you have to get through that gate. The 100 foot wide vegetation. Yeah. Oh. So if did there's they have not, if it was a different site and there, and there was lawn there, or a parking lot, or a parking lot, then there's not. But that's not the case with Arcadia. So if they have to get through that gate, did they file for a variance? A there's no variance. Around, there's, there's around that regulation? No, it's only, rest, it's only restoration or mitigation to deal with. Okay. Those are the two variances. Or the commission can say no. The commission is often presented with projects that some people want to bomb. And whatever, they, whatever the owner proposes, they say no. Because they don't think, because there's a spot in here where it says your mitigation has to be commensurate with the size and scope of your project. And mm -hmm. some people can, you know, and that's up to your discretion. Right. So they can bomb these things. So, you know, again, this, there was a hundred foot of undisturbed area. And the next one says, if there's not, but that's not the case here. Right. So he's stuck with, there's a hundred foot wide area. Did how does he work there now? How, did, how does he get into that area? They actually didn't have a hundred foot wide. I, I didn't think. No, they did. The hundred foot riverfront area is right at the edge of the pavement heading out onto Arcadia. Right. I, just, I drew the line there. I said, remember the right. spot. It's a little tiny piece that Doesn't isn't. Doesn't it go on the, the neighbor's property? The hundred foot, doesn't it? It goes on everyone's Everybody's property. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, it goes on everyone's property. Everyone has that hundred foot. So technically in his, this property, part of that hundred foot was on the, the neighbor's property. So they technically didn't have a hundred foot on their property. No, no, he had, a, he had a complete hundred foot on their property. I can go back to that day if you need Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought it went uh, uh, on uh, one of the neighbors. See yeah, this see? line here? Yeah. 100 foot in a riparian right. area. So it goes on, that's the neighbor's property right there. Well, it's not right here because they no, are building it is, there. It is there. Oh, like this little slice? Yes. I don't understand what you're getting at. Yeah. Where's he building this up? He didn't it's have, that's not his property. That's, that's not his property. That's not his property. Right. So he didn't have 100 feet there anyway. That's why it was asking, did they have to file for a variance because they didn't actually have the 100 feet there but on his property. That is, is, are those red lines Chuck? Dave, that doesn't school? show that that's not his property. Yeah, that no, shows that it is his property. No, that's not his property. That's not his property. No, that's, that's Rauchy's that's our, property. That's our friend that comes in. Yeah. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. That's not his property. In front here. of his house? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this property. Oh, this property here. Yeah. Oh, I, I get can't it. see what you're pointing at. <laughs> that, that dotted line. Sorry. This property is belongs to Rauch. Right. Right here. Right. And here's his property, and it only right. has this much frontage. Right. But here is the hundred foot. Right. That's the hundred feet. Yeah. That's the hundred about. foot riverfront right. in a riparian area. Right. So he's building but it's house. coming from up here, going this way. Correct. So he's completely in it, except for here, that which piece. is two hundred foot. So all this applies. You, you're just explaining. You know that, right? You're not. Right. No. Uh, you, you're saying that that you have to have a hundred feet of natural vegetation. He doesn't have it on his property. Who's his? The well, he's saying that this. He needs to make up this spot here. Yeah, that's not part of the. That's not his. The, his, his property. property. No, but if if. Well, if he ever he came in, he would be subject to protecting that hundred foot. Right. Whatever he has, he has to protect that. Yes. Oh, I get that. But no, my, my question was is because I knew that, that where that 100 foot line was, the reason why I asked did they have to have a variance for that 100 feet because I knew part of that 100 foot was on Rouchy's lot. That's why I asked that question. So, right, I, a variance is something very specific that we ask for in our bylaws. And, and when you have that variance, we, we ask for 
the specific reasons of why you're making that that variance, and, and so it's yeah. that that does have a specific definition. So just because it. you're not meeting right. it, the, you know, in these other codes, just as Chuck showing, just because you're not meeting it, there's just like it says, there's the gate. Okay, yeah. now you right. got to go through this area. I get you it. need to provide some sort of restoration or mitigation. Yep. There are also variances under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act if you're over 5,000 square feet of, of wetlands impact. So he could, he could, and I don't think he does, but you can make the argument that he falls into the next category. So to the maximum extent feasible, which is all he has because he doesn't have the whole property in 100 feet. Right. He has to maintain that corridor of whatever Natural he has. Right. Still, he can't build there. Right. So this, no one said he can build there yet. Mm -hmm. No. His house would be completely in the 100 foot uh, yeah. riverfront yes. zone. The yeah, in a right be, yeah. zone. Yeah. yeah. And he has to, you know, cut down all the trees to get there. So we went through, oh, we went through this and we did F and G as mitigation yeah. and, and restoration. And you guys, you know, should you should read them because it's, I mean, it's clear to me, and I suffered through this, and this is exactly what I called DEP on, and I was fortunate enough to get one of their lawyers one day, and she goes, I don't even know why I'm talking to you, but I was just <laughs> like you, Dave. I was saying, no, this is how I understand it. Right. And she was telling me, no, this is how it is. There's no, we're not, we're not rewriting it because you think it's read a different way. Um, so this is what she told me, and uh, that project, was so an enforcement so enforcement so we can enforce on an existing order of conditions or for in or for violations and in violations would include unauthorized fill so enforcements you know do, can we ask for mitigation? No, but I thought that a little bit of this was why do we always ask people to clean up their yard? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, this we have enforcement, we have the Wetlands Protection Act, and we have the riverfront, and so Bible. hopefully you understand that each one of those allows you to do it right. at, this, at this point. So in our town bylaw, uh, which is the next one, Oh man, I skipped, I skipped through it? Okay. In our town bylaw, um, in section two, the general provisions, H, it has enforcements and it also talks about dredging, altering, um, or leaving unauthorized material uh, in these areas. So under our town bylaw, under enforcement, we can ask for that to be removed. Okay, so that's also in an order of conditions or through enforcement. Um, why? Why is if it's you can't find it? Is it apply in our bylaw? Because if it's not in our bylaw, it's accepted that we're accepting what it says in the Wetlands Protection Act. Because the bylaw has to be written with more strength than the Wetlands Protection Act, or it doesn't apply, or it wouldn't be accepted by the Attorney General. So anything that's equal. No good. Does we go to yeah. the Wellness Protection Act? It has to be stronger. Yeah. If it's not said, mm. you're back to it unless you specifically say that we do not agree with anything else other than what's in our bylaw. But it doesn't say that in our bylaw. So, um, leaving unauthorized fill. Are you allowed to say that? I know a town that does that. Actually, you But they, they have five attorneys on their, their board. <laughs> Uh, when we were going through something else, the thing at Timbernack. Oh, thank God. The at Timbernack. Was that? At, yeah, we're going through that thing at Timbernack. There was a uh, research that was done through the uh, state attorney generals that said you can make a Massachusetts state right law more severe, but you can't make it less. Yeah, same, same kind of same thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all these things might, you might say, oh, I, I recognize that from somewhere else because they're yeah. not really rewriting the rules. Um, so enforcement, you know, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't. And we have the ability to go after them, and the fine can be three hundred dollars, up to three hundred dollars a day per day for the violation. So the tree, we could have been giving them a three hundred dollar violation um, day after day, except in our bylaw, there's a process that's laid out. 
So you can't just go straight to the right. ticket. Mm. You, you got to do all these other things. It's something I agree with because you get your best best feedback when you talk to someone, right. yeah. and then when that doesn't work, you send a letter. Then you know you you step it up, but usually people understand. Um, when was the last time you issued a ticket? <laughs> I have never issued one. I've never issued one. <laughs> At the Mac the conference, they did how many it. times would I have liked to issue one? <laughs> <laughs> At the Mac conference, they did it. I've issued every single one as I was driving back to the town hall in my truck, screaming. You know, I didn't want to do that. But <laughs> is that because you never, it never got to that, meaning like the letters and conversation resolved the matter. And sometimes it's needed, but usually what ends up happening is. So what we don't want to happen is we, we write a ticket and we write a ticket and you know every day and we're worth fifteen hundred dollars and then the guy decides well, well that's a lot of money I'm going to come in and talk to the commission and we have this ticket or these several tickets at fifteen hundred dollars and then the commission turns around and says well just clean up the project and we'll waive the tickets so we don't you don't want to be in that position so we want to go through those steps mm -hmm. not only letting the homeowner know that uh, you know you know the the, you know. We're coming down on you, yeah. but we want to let the commission know because it's not always the same people. We want to let the commission know. So once we get to that point, there's no you can't write the order of conditions and say, but but we're going to let the tickets go. No, that's separate. That's separate. We've already decided on that. Once you get a ticket in this, so if I ever did write a ticket, I can't take it back. We were, we were told not to do that. So it's it's it, so you got to be sure. Everyone has to be sure if we're going in that direction, and it's often not needed. At the uh, MAC conference, I was at a thing about uh, violations. <laughs> and there was a guy down in Whitman, Mass, that dug up uh, the edge of a pond and he built a wall there. And they come in and said, What are you doing? And I guess the guy had just done things wrong throughout the whole project. He was renovating the house, building a house, put a three car garage on it that was, you know, totally in the buffer zone. and, and too close to the, the the canal that was there, so when he built his wall, I guess that just that was the straw that broke the camel's back. It was right on the edge of the pond. And with the drones, they're yeah. catching and more people. Really? Oh, really? They, they, oh, find, yeah. they oh. find him three three hundred dollars a day. No way! And it ran for over three months. That's great. That's and, and the guy said, "I'm not paying it." And it ended up going all the way to the Supreme Court. And that's wow. a, yeah, it's a Superior Court. And the guy said, I'm not going to appeal it. The judge says, no, you're not. And he ended up paying it. Yeah, jeez. Keep it in the But, I mean, to let it run for 300 bucks a day for three months? How much is that? I can picture it. $270,000. So, so Chip, you can email us this. Yeah, I can email us this. So they... The, also, the, I think the DEP is a lot tougher because was they have categories sorry, 9, 9, that they find you for. So yeah. if you're in that first tier, it's not $300, like it's like 50000 or something like that. And it's, it's, and it's often, like when Ron's Stellini came out here, here to talk to us, like he was in the first tier. And often, like when Ron Stelline came out here to talk to us about a project that was had done something bad, he's like, I don't want to find these guys unless I have to because it's such a burden. It's it's We don't have a 20 dollar fine. We don't have a three hundred dollar fine. We have a fifty thousand dollar fine and on up. So I mean there there there's those are the people you want to go after when you want to find people. Uh, we did enforcement and the violations include uh, leaving an authorized fill. You're going over slides. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well what the time it is. Yeah. Oh would you go to that? General <laughs> provisions, this is our regulations, enforcement Leaving unauthorized fill, otherwise failure yes, to legally, <laughs> illegally, okay. hey, just, he's no. just hammering the altered point. land, <laughs> putting it back to its original conditions. These are all things we can do. Uh, and the performance in the resource area. It says banks, everyone agrees that that's a typo, okay? Well, most people agree that that's a typo. Um, so when we issue an order, all design mitigation they're able to do. Wait, what do you mean that's a typo? Sorry. Well, banks doesn't really apply to this one here. Oh, okay. This D. So it's, that's not a bank. And it says freshwater wetlands. And it says freshwater wetlands. So I don't think that that really works for banks. 
Um, and this talks about our two to one replacement, how it's stronger than the one to one that the state has for uh, replacement of freshwater wetlands. So we can, we can ask for that, uh, replacement of freshwater wetlands. Um, replacement of shell be located in general same area. So some of these things are like a mix between Riverfront and the Wetlands Protection Act. And um, these are general provisions. So these generally go on every permit that we have. Um, there's my reference material. And that's it, right? A woman from the DEP told me there's some communities in Massachusetts that require a four to one replication. Right there. Yeah. That was the picture of four to one. I just thought you guys would see this again. Yeah, just do it. Again. <laughs> all this, and all this time done? I thought. Yeah. No. Are um, we done? No. We're done with wait this. Wait a minute, Becky. Did I hear a motion to adjourn? Becky, look at, look at, well, look at the screen. I saw it before. Okay. <laughs> um, are we supposed to be voting? For what? Did we, or did we vote for the next year? I thought you told me last meeting we didn't. No, we didn't. Oh, no. for chair, vice chair, chair that's what he's sure. saying. Oh. Are we being, I mean, I don't care if we extend it, it's 11 o'clock, but aren't we supposed to be We're uh, supposed to do that in June. Yeah, two it's months July. ago. I thought we did. So we, we have to have a vote. So what happened was, when, it, when, when asked to serve, I mean, that guy should have been here again. But <laughs> when asked to serve, uh, no one stepped forward. And Becky and Anika have just kept on, and I think that we were kind of waiting for a full commission to be here. If you want to start the discussion, it's fine with me. But uh, let me ask you a question. Did you see that? <laughs> uh, that, come, that comes with it with email, right? It's you know, perfect for me to all this time, I, I thought with. effigy was the opposite of perigee. <laughs> Okay. One more time before we're done. Do we, do I, I do have no need to make a change. Data? I just know that it was something that's hanging out there that we're supposed let's, to at let's least wait consider. So, hmm. in, in, in I, all I seriousness, no to, I, go ahead. in all seriousness, if you can just settle down. Um, <laughs> if we can't find replacements, we're going to actually have to vote you and whoever is going to be vice chair back in or maybe there's someone wants to be chair and you could be vice chair something like that but each year we don't have to change we have to have a vote and i just want this out there because i we need to we need to work on it and i guess you, say you didn't want to stay again or you do i i can i can do it but um i want to know if if i'll canvas it now if anybody wants to be chair or vice chair and you, that's you are the chair. I'm the chair, and Anika is the vice, vice chair. chair. Yeah. I, I would suggest the new members, you know, wait a while before. I was going to wait about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay? That's that's okay. To me. Don't listen to the meeting two weeks ago, <laughs> two times ago. What was that one about? Oh, Bob, well, I said if you were the chair, we'd have to have the meetings at a baseball field. <laughs> well, softball. it's only during the summer, <laughs> the spring, ex softball, and it's, uh, but it's, I mean, that's where we're at. I mean, I, I just, it either needs to be voted again or we have to make a change. But is it legal to understand as vice chair? Is what? Anika will understand. I don't know that we've asked her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you, we had the discussion, but nobody stepped up, so we didn't vote. Does anyone want to be chair? I mean, we can ask everyone here. Does anyone want to be chair? I think Rebecca does. I vote for Rebecca. <laughs> okay, so we have one vote for Rebecca. So chair seems to be taken care of. Does anyone here who's not <laughs> want to be vice it. chair? I'm just trying to move it along. I mean, it's, no, it's, I mean this was it's, fun, but you it's know, it's wait. This, this other stuff is <laughs> not. Well, that's not my definition of fun. So, yeah. does anybody want to be vice chair? Anika, although you've changed. No. <laughs> <laughs> the new Anika. The new Anika. <laughs> so, I'm not hearing any change. I'm not hearing any change. Okay. Change isn't good. Is that, so, um, I would make a a motion to 
vote in our chair for another term. Can I wait until Anika's here to vote for the vice chair? Well, maybe we can slide maybe she really into just the door, can't. just vote status quo. Maybe we the answer. What does that mean? We'll it's tell you later. only 11 months left. I know. I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, with no, seven no members now. I have to tell you, I get a lot of help from Dave. He's not the chair or vice chair, but he is a great source. Uh, he's always there when I call. I think we asked and he, you. And he's I, willing to go out on his own. And he's I don't know if these guys were here, but I, I declined. And I declined not because I'm not interested. But I have at least three and possibly four serious surgeries that are coming up. And I may have to actually ask for a hiatus yeah. for my, my membership. So I, I don't, if I stepped in as, as the chair, I would leave that seat open for an extended oh, wow. period of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So. Yeah, Chuck. Because Chuck doesn't get a vote. <laughs> I literally just. In, in, it's hard to imagine that I'm after all the talking I do, I don't vote. I really do. Because <laughs> I'm thinking there's seven of us here minus. And he goes, yeah. plus Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I was seven plus Chuck. Oh my god. So, so I mean, oh, that's a three-year term you signed well, up for. So, <laughs> so I, they can penalize you tax-wise. So. I think okay, it's, I think it's going to be difficult to get a full commission I, here. I, I guess so. I would at least right, want to vote on chair. I make a motion to vote Becky chair for another year. My second. All in oh, favor. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would just mo let Anika make sure she says she wants to be vice right. chair before we. Well, and tell her. Let's, let's vote her as a proviso. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think we can wait for that. Okay. And if, if what Dave says happens, I I like to make a motion that we get a Dave an effigy to sit here, <laughs> and I get to answer for what Dave would say in his effigies. You know what we could do? <laughs> I think he has uh, he has to, as a matter of fact, when the surgery is over, don't you have to be in a full body cast? And they change those out like every two or three weeks. <laughs> just you can yeah. just get one to us, and we'll paint it. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be coming in here like Stephen Hawking. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. oh. I think I need to adjourn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor. I just had one more thing I wanted to do. <laughs> um, is there, do we have anything that you know of coming up in uh, two weeks? I'm glad that you took the time.